I would like to call to order the special meeting of the South Burlington City Council of Monday, October 30th, 2023. We will not have the normal Pledge of Allegiance because we don't have a flag in this room. <laughs> so we'll move on to item two. Um, instructions on exiting the building in case of an emergency and we do technology. Thank you. Um, so for those in the room, thank you for joining us. Um, if there is an emergency, you can go down the um, elevator staircase right here behind this room or all the way to the left down the hall which is downstairs. There is a place of refuge at that. Um, there is uh, there is a place of refuge at the end of that hallway if you need to wait for somebody. Um, for those participating remotely, we have quite a crowd. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you are interested in speaking on an item on the agenda or during public comment, please either turn your camera on and then the chair will call on you or indicate you'd like to um, speak in the chat um, and the chair will call on you. Otherwise, we are not monitoring the chat for content. Okay, thank you. So we'll move on to item three. Are there any um, additions, deletions, or changes in order of the agenda? I would suggest or ask that we add to the executive session um, I would suggest you add a new executive session to the end of the council agenda since okay. I think you're going to do the initial executive session mid meeting. All good. Oh, okay. It's like item 9A. Yeah. So 9A, we will add an executive session. Okay. We have to vote on that. We have to approve the agenda with that change. Okay. So are there any other changes? Okay, so um, I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we have that added to our agenda. Then I'll move on to item four, which is comments and questions from the public um, on issues not related that are not on the agenda. So we do we do we we have a lot of people in the audience. So I'm assuming you want to tell us something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're all ears. I, I will start. I'm going to be the I'm going to play for a whole day for you. Here we go. We get a little break. It's going to start again. This was today. This is what I listened to. And you approve this. My daughter she had a mind, she had a concussion. I picked her up from school on Friday, down at Skidmore College. I picked her up, and you know what? I told her I could bring her home, and hopefully, because it was a sunny day and 71 degrees, that the builders said that they wouldn't pound that day. But you know what? They did. I called three times. She had a concussion. For goodness sakes, I couldn't bring my daughter home in a safe, quiet place. She had to listen to this all day long. Imagine waking up and this is what you hear. I am shaking. My chiropractor might even show up. He's like, you're a not I'm like, I am a not. You are approving this. You are absolutely avoiding the fact that there is a noise ordinance in this town. And this is ridiculous. I will leave it here for other comments and anybody else, and this will sit here and I will continue to repeat it for as long as this meeting today. Comment? John? I would like to comment, but could you turn that off while I comment? Thank you. It is obnoxious. Actually, they should be hearing every comment with that. With that. That's why I wanted to. Well, you know, I want to be sure they could hear. You know, well, that's fine. This is, the point. this is why we're here. Because we can't hear. Well, we need to hear you. Well, you. I, I think you've sure. made your point. Do you think I, I have? Because it's still point. happening, and this is like month number six or seven. Well, I, I don't want to have an I'm argument. What I meant was, oh. I can, can appreciate hear me? how obnoxious that is. Can anyone hear me? 
Hello, can anyone hear me? Judy, we can hear you. And I, you know, I need to say something because I fully support what this woman is doing, but I have long COVID and I will not be able to attend the meeting with that going on because I have extreme sound sensitivity, which is why I'm attending the meeting tonight. Um, and I fully support what she is attempting to do, but I, I and I really want to attend this meeting. Okay. That's fair. We'll keep it up. That's fair. I, I too, excuse me, Paula Cooper, Six Park Road. I too support this. So um, can we the, have this a little more organized than just I? We will hear everyone. We have a lot of people in the room, and I, here's I, my chiropractor. He's here. Typically, we come on in. There's one more chair. Um, we typically will go through everyone in the in the room and then uh, make sure we hear from everyone online and what we'd like you to do so that people aren't just yeah. but my heart is yelling racing. out or speaking out um is I will have to leave the meeting if that keeps going on as much as I, I think it's a great idea I can't I'm, I'm feeling ill we're, we're going to turn it won't be on again Judy so if you want to listen to the other people you can't but i'd like to have this in a orderly way so we can both hear each other i did not get your na name because of the noise mine yes lisa angwin thank you okay and john yeah. okay it's okay yeah. we stay here and not you know you're small enough to sit up here do we i think you can can they stay there i think this is seems to be pretty, pretty sensitive. sensitive you're okay with yeah that? sure um very quickly um thank so you for, thank for you. everyone to know who you are we know yeah john Bosange, 579 golf course road um thank you um this is the second time i've been through this the first time was i think two years ago when black rock was doing this on the same and i couldn't believe it started up again because it went to black rock we asked they said we're not going to do that anymore here i don't know if they're building that project or not but when i started to hear this i pulled out the ordinance thinking there'd be something there and i read through it and you've read it many times and it said noise shall be deemed unreasonable when disturbs injuries and dangers to peace or health and i thought unreasonable in peace and health safety and welfare for me what that how i define that is unreasonable is the length the frequency and the volume and that's not defined in the ordinance somehow and we've got to figure out a way to do that because it's really this is subjective and there's no teeth to it um i then looked at the memos that we received october 16th from the city and I appreciate those. Uh, the first one was on the 16th. Recognize that property owners have the right to develop. And that didn't really do anything, didn't learn anything. That I'm assuming they satisfied the LDRs. So that memo didn't create any clarity. The next one we received was the 23rd that said the city's regulations permit construction noise between 7 and 9, 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. I couldn't find that anywhere in the noise ordinance. So maybe I missed it. But that's something we need to think about too, bookends for this. But the biggest thing for me to deal with length, frequency, and sound and volume, some way to measure decibels. That's lacking. And that's probably the best way to look at this. When you look at other ordinances, they do have decibels in their uh, amount. I don't know what the amount is, but somehow you have to have that in there so that there's a way to govern those three things. And I would ask you to really do that to give this some more teeth and guidance for developers as well. That's it, thank you. Okay, thank you. Who else would like to speak? Lisa. I'll speak, hi, uh, my name is Amanda Hannaford. Um, I have an MRI scheduled on Thursday, so I'm trying not to get sick. <laughs> yes. um, so I, um, I just want to, a third, what, what the two previous speakers. I'm sorry, where do you live? Uh, well, I live on 37 Butler Drive. Um, so I'm on the other right, side. The other so side it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so I would say since June 2020, this has been ongoing. It started at 9.17 this morning. Um, and usually it's sometimes it starts promptly at 9. 
Um, it used to start earlier in 2020, it started early, it goes till 5 p.m. Um, so we've experienced all day jackhammering for months every year. The first two years of the pandemic when my work was de-densified and I was asked to work from home from time to time, it was a bit of joke with my co-workers because when we were in a meeting, I would have to go downstairs into the basement bathroom, which faces the other way and has a very small window because it was the only room where I didn't disrupt meetings and um, I could hear people with earphones, but the minute I got off, um, I got off mute to participate, all people could hear was the jackhammering. Um, so earlier this year, I broke my knee and I've been a, I was in a full leg cast and non-weight bearing for 12 weeks. So during that time, um, I needed to get help going up and down stairs. I can only ride in the back of a car. So I worked from home. Um, and there were many times when I was unable to participate in meetings as I was expected to do because the noise was so loud that I disrupted people um, because I couldn't go into the basement bathroom. Um, so the noise impacts my ability to perform my job, to make a living, and my health and quality of life. Um, I watched the last the video of last of the last city council meeting on 1016. And during the meeting, Councillor Chalnick read from the South Burlington noise ordinance and said he thought the noise violated the noise ordinance. I agree. Um, I imagine if, well, I have a question for you. Um, if I purchased property next to Adam Hergenrother or Tom Hergenrother and produced 90 decibels jackhammering noise in a loudspeaker, um, would this be a violation of the noise ordinance? And do, and if, and that's question one. And if so, would the South Burlington police enforce the violation or would planning, or would South Burlington allow me to continue making the noise while Paul Connor and planning and zoning met with me to discuss it for weeks on end? So those, I, you know, that did, if, if that is the case, that, it, that I as an individual citizen would be held accountable to the noise ordinance, and I don't understand why businesses are not, doesn't seem cool. Sorry, that was longer than I thought it was. No, that's okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else in the audience who would like to say something? Yes. Hi, um, hi counselors. Uh, Fellow residents, my name is Christina Griffin. I live on Golf Course Road. Um, I am. I'll skip restating the points that that our, many of our their neighbors have eloquently made. Um, my home does not directly abut Long Drive. I'm approximately 0.2 miles away on Golf Course Road. The noise from the ledge removal was extraordinary and disruptive at my home all day, every day. Uh, for many weeks during the initial site work in 2020, and is again currently during the individual home sites preparation. Um, it also has the potential to continue for many more months for the seven remaining home sites. Um, I don't begrudge anyone's dream to build a home. However, unfortunately, there now exist conflicting conditions. That is, to permit building that requires extensive ledge removal and noise violates the interest and rights of others. So to that end, I'm here with wonderful South Burlington fellow residents with a call to action. The first is to please define what is the enforcement for this violation of the nuisance ordinance for excessive noise, and to please halt the ledge removal until there is a mutually respectful path forward including considering approving home plans that do not have basements or pools. This would not be unprecedented in the neighborhood. In fact, the majority of all of the homes on Golf Course Road on both the east and west sides north of Long Drive do not have basements. So it's not unprecedented. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for all of your hard work and for leading with best intent and also for listening to us tonight. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes. Mark, right. Twenty three O'Brien Drive. I'm an avid golfer up at the course. I hear the noise. It's a great point about the decibel level. What is somebody measuring them, and what are them? I'd heard there's no blasting allowed up there. 
um, has somebody looked into if they did blast for a short period and that would get away from the jackhammering and shorten the duration, shorten it significantly? Is blasting something that they can do to make the neighbors happy and get it over with quicker? And, and again, I've heard that uh, blasting is not permitted up there. So just bringing that point up. And it's a huge nuisance. The noise is really unbearable if you haven't been up there to hear it. Thank you. I think the blasting issue was one of the conclusions from the last talk that they couldn't blast. I think it's the vibrations. I think it's too close. Other people's homes. All of O'Brien Hillside Farm One was done by blasting with a special agreement right. with all the Stillington Circle people and a firm that did the blasting came in, did video recordings. Everybody had to sign a document. Right. It took extra money, extra time, but it was a quicker dem demolition of the, the ledge. Right. But you know, there's. Okay. Um, anyone else? Yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Beth Zygmunt, 338 Golf Course Road. Um, I spoke at the last meeting. I think my comments are still available online. I just want to comment on the uh, the idea of blasting. Blasting is not permitted on that site. It's my understanding because of the tree protection requirement. There are protected trees on that site. Therefore, blasting is not allowed. Um, the tree protection area has been violated numerous times. I don't know. What the enforcement mechanism is and that's another point that i wanted to make tonight it doesn't seem like if you, if you rerun the tape from the last meeting it doesn't seem like there's any clarity in the city in the city hall among the counselors and among the city staff about who has the power to enforce what do the police enforce the nuisance ordinance last time we last time we were here we were told that the planning and zoning office had enforcement power with regards to the nuisance ordinance does jesse baker have the ultimate executive authority on the council in an email exchange with one of the city councilors that's what i was told that is contrary to everything that i understand about the city government the the hired city manager from another town does not have executive authority over how the ordinances in this town are enforced that's my understanding of it so what I'm saying is that there seems to be just a general lack of communication or clarity among the members of the city council and the city staff on who enforces what, who has what type of power, um, what recourse do the citizens of the town have when the ordinances are not being enforced? Is our only recourse to hire an attorney and sue the city? Um, so, so these are some of the issues that I think are being unearthed by this problem. And, I, as a, as a as a member of this town now for four years, um, I personally would love to have some clarity on those issues. And also, I support everything that was said in this room. Um, this this um, this woman over here, Lisa Engwin, one of my neighbors. I appreciate the fact that you brought in the speaker and played that noise. Imagine that noise. I tell you, I measured it on my back deck. Now, mind you, I didn't hire a noise professional because the the price quote that I got for that was $1,900 to have a professional come in and measure the noise from my back deck. I measured it on an app on my phone. It was reaching 90 decibels, which is the limit that OSHA sets for, for having to put in ear protection. So I appreciate you playing that. Imagine that at 90 decibels, 80 to 90 decibels for eight hours a day, every single week, every, every single day of the week. Thank you uh, for listening to me. Um, that's all I have to say. But I think it would be helpful for Jesse to respond. Um, this is public comment. Oh, okay. All right. But in terms of your role um, as the chief executive, yes. Uh, she, chief executive, we're, we're, no matter where she not, lives, she's not an elected she, official. She's not a chief executive. We have a city manager form of government. She is our chief chief executive. And I just want everybody, it's very clear that is our form of government. And okay. we are a legislative body here. We certainly, and Andrew and I are looking at the, the noise ordinance, but that is a long-term solution. You're looking for a short-term solution. So we're looking for a long-term solution. Well, you know, there are seven, six to seven lots left to be developed right, on that property. Right, right. That's maybe 10 months of this. Fair enough, fair enough. You didn't ask for this in 2020. What's changed? 
So we, we, we thought we had some agreements, I guess, number one, but let, I, I think we want to hear from you and then we can have a, a conversation and a discussion. We're going to have a little bit of one in an executive session in terms of understanding some of this, but um, we will be back with the public to um, hopefully come up with um, some solutions. Because I think it is trickier than it appears. But I totally understand your um, your concern and um, frustration on how long, how loud, and you know, we thought we it's had. fundamental to our health. Uh, I, I understand that you're kind of preaching to the choir here in but terms someone of someone has to be able to make a decision to to stop it. Like I don't, I guess I don't understand. I really well, think I think I, that's why I think it's a little. <laughs> Gonna, Let us have the executive session and hopefully we'll find more clarity after that. I would appreciate it. Thank you. you know, I think there everyone has legal rights. So we have to manage all of those when we make decisions. So you would like to speak only because you use the word tricky and I wonder what that means. I mean, I think that we the public Oh, can we have your name first? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Just for the well, I, I was only here in support of others speaking, but um, I don't understand what is tricky about this. Could you, please, could you share? You explain it. Bronwyn Dunn, I'm at 50 Park Thank Road. you. What's well, tricky, I just think things are more complicated. I guess that's what I mean. But there's complications. Does the public know what those complications are? I don't know if I know all of them, but I think there's some legal ramifications when someone is given a, um, a permit to build and then you suddenly make changes. I think there's a process for that. Can I just ask laws for, I, for most of us? I, I know I, not I, everyone well, follows them, but I'm, I'm just concerned that everybody must have known there was ledge there. I, I don't know how to answer that because I don't. I, I have a lot of ledge in my yard, so uh, that may be a kind of solution. Identifying where ledge is and making decisions about building. That's why I think it's a little more complicated than just coming up with a season. Just, uh, I don't can know I, what the can I ask is. if there's a speakers list as a member of the public. I'd like to participate in public forum. Yeah, we will get to people on the on the um, who who have entered electronically. We're dealing with the people in the um, audience right now, and then okay. you. We have a list of people who have indicated to um, Jesse who would like to speak, and I will call on you in the order I receive them. So we will hear from all of you, I promise. Okay. We have someone else who read, yes. Um, so I'm on the front line of mental health in the state and in the state of New Jersey where I'm licensed both states mm -hmm. and so I work remotely. So I it's very hard to have clients mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. on the phone mm -hmm. and I'm talking them down from whatever they're needing to be talked down from. And I can't like focus or hear myself. So on uh, I'm still remote. So it, it is a problem in terms of my employment. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is I'm wondering, I'm actually fearful of the other eight or 10 lots. And I, I guess I'm wondering who would know the answer to the question, have those lots already been um, okayed? Permitted would be the term. Yeah. Could you tell me yes or no? I personally don't know that. Who we can, who so would know can I make a suggestion? Yeah, I think these are great questions and I think it would be really um, useful to me if, yeah. if we could get all the questions on the table and then we I will respond with direction from staff um, tomorrow in writing to everybody and I will put a piece of paper out with for email addresses if you haven't already contacted me and I don't already have your email address. Okay, great. So, so they'll we'll answer. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, oh. Um, can we use the back of Paul? Can you get me a piece of paper, please? Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Oh, let's just say one more question. Christine, Christina Griffin, golf course road again. Um, <laughs> I um, thank you for committing to responding because over the last three weeks, I've called and left three voicemails and I've emailed your office and I've gotten no, no email back, no phone call back. So um, a communication back would be really welcome. Thanks. Okay. John? Just one moment of uh, clarity. Um, seven lots are an issue, but I think we know coming in the golf course road on the Wheeler property, there are 32 more homes mm -hmm. going to be built and across the way, 14 more. So the intersection there, and that is all ledge. We've been down that. It's all ledge on the ridge there. So you got 32 lots and 14 on top of those seven. So it's it's something we need to know mm -hmm. ahead of time. I know you know, it's, just, it's a lot more in the future. There's immediate problems, but there's something that will need to be clarified in the future. I would agree. More there, you know. I think that's a critical piece. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. If there is nobody else in the audience, we'll go to the screen. And then if Oh, okay. Yes. Monica? Yes. Monica Farrington, 4 Green Dolphin Drive, South Burlington. Been there almost 50 years. Long story short, would you give me an interpretation of number four, please? It says comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda. So if there's something on the agenda, are we not able to we, comment? We would ask that you make your comments when we're having that conversation. Okay. Thank you. That's what that means. I'm Thank sorry. You. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hi, Amanda Hanford again. I just wanted to follow up on John's um, ledge um, quickly on John's ledge comment uh -huh. and ask a question, um, which I'll also write down. But um, my understanding from about blasting with dynamite is that it really isn't an answer. It might happen a little more quickly, but it sounds like the permit for the Wheeler Park parcel is three months of blasting every day. And so that's like 90 days of blasting. Um, and then there's the chipping up of the rocks and putting it and so that it fits in a dump truck. It's, so I don't really, it doesn't seem like, like, oh, we could just dynamite, then we wouldn't mm -hmm. have a noise problem. So um, okay. I think that's an issue. Thanks. Um, let's go to um, Judy. We already heard from, right? Yes. Yeah, Judy, did you want to speak yeah. again, or no? Okay. Oh, do yes. Um, okay. I do. I want to take a moment to represent the disability community. Um, everybody has spoken wonderfully about what's going on, just from the perspective of somebody who has long COVID. Um, at, you know, I went through 2020 and um, it was bad enough because I was already ill with dysautonomia, which causes extreme sound sensitivity. Uh, I have long COVID. Long COVID causes heart problems, sound problems. And I can only work a couple of hours a day now. When the sound goes, starts, I cannot function at all. It makes my heart race and it cause I have severe head pain. And I've e I emailed about this. Um, so I lose the ability to do any work when I can work. So it's affecting me economically. But the other thing I want to point out, and I do appreciate that that sound was stopped and I thought it was important that you all heard it, but the minute, it, you know, when it went off, I had to stop and I had to take emergency medication. I, I just want to give you a feeling of what it's like to live with that is my nervous system is unregulated because of long COVID. Um, and I'm living with that every single day. I live in fear of what's going to happen with Wheeler because the blasting is going to affect specifically, it'll come through Fox Run Lane. It's part of the, you know, the blast zone. And um, I just, you know, ask you to step in the shoes of someone who's already ill, living with the impact of the sound. I know someone else here has a daughter with concussion. It's, 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 it's a nightmare. It's a living nightmare to live with that sound because I, you know, it's, oh, 
okay, as soon as it starts, I have a migraine, my heart starts racing. It's not, it's, and you know, and it, 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 it's just like, it's, it's, I can't go to my office. I've been telecommuting for three years and um, I'm trapped here because there's nothing I can do when it starts. I can't drive, so I can't leave the house. I don't have a way to go and just get away from it for a little while. So I just, I just wanted to share that when you're thinking about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. My the daughter with long COVID, she's getting better, but she had quite a few months of that kind of um, um, medical conditions. So I'm I'm well aware of. Yeah, it's been it's been two years. So. You know, it's and it, it's like I said, I'm living in fear of the Wheeler development too. Oh, I can appreciate that. Um, Dennis Barton, I think he's up next. He moved away from this table. All right. Well, then we'll go to Jim Lee and come back to Dennis. Oh, Hello. Jim Lee. I'm sorry. That's okay. So I've read this noise ordinance and i think it very well defines um and provides power to the city to take action and it says that it shall be unlawful for any person to make or cause to be made any loud or unreasonable noise then it defines unreasonable noise noise shall be deemed unreasonable to be unreasonable when it disturbs injures or endangers the peace or health of a person. I'll stop there. So we've got undisputed testimony today that it is unreasonable because it's disturbing, injuring, or endangering the peace or health of a person. <clears throat> so now what about let's first go to what the ordinance provides for enforcement it says police uh, that for a violation of this ordinance that uh, violators are subject to an 800 dollar fine for each violation and each day of violation continues as a separate offense and police officers of the city of south burlington are authorized to act as municipal officials to issue and pursue before the Judicial Bureau a municipal complaint. And that's what it's called, a municipal complaint. So we have a mechanism of enforcement and the, in, the fees increase up to $800 by the time of the fifth day of the offense. Now we have in the United States something called equal justice under law. And we have all kinds of court decisions prohibiting selective prosecution. You can't just have a law that you decide not to enforce. If there is a law and this ordinance is a law, it must be enforced. It isn't a matter of, well, we don't feel like it. I don't understand that. We have a constitution that you have, as city officials, pledged to honor. And it requires equal justice. You can't just say, well, they're a corporation or they. We all are persons, and we have to have enforcement of the existing law. I don't think any word has to be changed in this to get this noise immediately put to a um, a complaint a municipal complaint and then it's up to uh, it's up to the people doing it to decide whether they want the to pay the fines and even after the fines even if they ignore the and, and pay the fines the city can then still bring them and ask for an injunction uh, and ask the court to enjoin there. So we have the law and we have the enforcement mechanism and we don't need anything else. So let's just ask the police to walk into the office of this perpetrator and give them this, what the police are authorized to do, provide the municipal complaint. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Dennis Barton. Walk away again. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> so I don't expect to testify. I'm here and just a uh, just just an advocate for some folks that we know that are neighbors and have been deeply disturbed by by this constant noise that's created by this development. And uh, this one individual has a disability um, and he is, needs his rest during the day. Um, he's in long term treatment for uh, for a physical condition. And it, it just seems like this is just a, a tremendous burden for not only him, but all other people that have been affected by this. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I'm not a resident of South Burlington, so I will abstain from further comment. Okay, so our protocol, Dennis, is to have your microphone on um, mute. Otherwise, yes. it, it means you wanted to speak, that's what I call it. Yeah, I had it on mute. I don't know how I ended up there because I just signed in as DB. That's okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, you had good testimony. Is there anyone else? All right. Hearing no more. We have a um you, yes. I I have something to add. Is this Paula Cooper? Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm on Six Park Road. I'm directly across from this disturbance. And oh, I I have oh. hyper. I have hyperacusis from chemo that I received from head and neck cancer. We moved back to Vermont the end of 19 and in 2020, um, the year proceeded with the bang, bang, bang. So uh, the noise level is very unbearable and um, it's definitely affected my mental health. And um, uh, Christina has, um, spoken eloquently on the situation. I appreciate that. And that's all I, I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else up there? You call her four and five, but their mics are on, but I guess they don't want to speak. Okay. I, can I speak? Who is, oh, Fred O'Neill? Yes, you may. Hi, I live on Park Road and I've been a resident in the Burlington. Can you hear me? Uh, South... Hello? Yes, Park, Park uh, I mean, Fred O'Neill has the, my, John. Yeah, I mean, I've I'm been a resident of South Burlington for 23 years. I lived in Butler Farms and I live in uh, on Park Road now. And I just want to say that ever since the Long Road development has gone into effect. It's been nothing but a problem. Um, uh, the trees, the developer was fined for the trees, the tr you know, cutting down too many trees. Um, I got a email, um, a couple of emails that said this, this banging would be done last week and it continues to be go on. When, when is somebody gonna hold these developers accountable for the disruptions in our lives. Okay, thank you, Fred. Is there someone else now who would like to speak? I'll, I can't read that. Well, uh, yeah, well, I, th this is Laura Waters. I, um, oh, okay. I've got the black screen, hi. Um, I just wanna express my incredible sympathy for all the people who have called in. We're, we live in Queen City Park and are struggling with the potential noise issues from the higher ground development that's gonna be at the end of our road. And I would like to share this information with the folks if they're interested. We have somebody who's been giving us a lot of advice on noise and it's his name is Les Blomberg. And he uh, runs what's called Noise Pollution Clearinghouse out of Montpelier. His number is 802-229-1659. And he's an amazing resource. And hopefully if he, if anybody wants to reach out to him, that he can be helpful to you guys. That's it. Okay, thank you, Laura. Anyone else? Oh, Janet Bellavance. I'm off to tell you've been waving. 
Pardon me? Oh, we did. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't have his Matt Green. Okay, John, sorry. Hi. Um, that's fine. I, I had my hand up for a while. Um, not to repeat, I agree with most everything that's been said so far. Just a couple points that I wanted to make. Uh, just as clarification, uh, you are a governing body, not a legislative body. The executive works for the city council. So while you can't directly give Paul Connor work instructions, you can give Jesse Baker work instructions. She works for you. So if you want to do something, you can tell her and she will make it happen or she will tell you why she can't. And then you have to decide if you accept that. Oh, absolutely. But she does work for you. Uh, second point, uh, I looked at currently there are two permitted properties and two built properties on Long Drive. If you pull the permits for all four of those, you'll see the two that were done that have now been completed that were done under, um, oh, what was the lady's name? Delilah. She actually had a piece of paper in there that said you have to follow the tree ordinance and it specifically said you have to follow the nuisance ordinance. The two permits that were recently issued didn't have that. There's nothing in the permits that speaks to ledge at all, which implies to me that it wasn't considered. I find it hard to believe after everything that happened over the last couple of years that that was missed. Now they were signed off by Marty. I work with Marty on the DRB. I like Marty, Marty's a good guy. I don't think anything malicious happened, but I do wonder whether he was aware of the problem. My ask is as we're issuing more of these permits, there are six more of these lots that can be developed. Can we minimize ledge? Don't allow in-ground swimming pools. Don't allow basements. Crawl space and slab are perfectly valid building methods. If they need to trench for utilities or something, maybe that's something we can't get around. But there are ways to build, to build very nice, very expensive houses that don't require full basements. So if we could look at this ahead of time, then the developers would know and we can come to some sort of agreement. And maybe there is a way to do this allowing the development and not torturing the neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, anyone else? Oh, Janet Bellavance. <coughs> Maybe she doesn't want to speak. Okay. Can I just respond to what John said? I think I think he raises a good point, but I think that we already have a law and no building permit can be written that allows violation of the law. How, do, how does the DRB get the authority to allow somebody to just flagrantly violate the law? They don't have that authority. So the law is there and everyone must follow it. Otherwise, who will respect the law? How do we have the rule of law? If, well, it's you, you don't have to follow it, but you do. If you're a poor person, oh yeah, we really nail you with the law. But if you're a corporation, no, you don't have to follow. It. No, this isn't how it's supposed to work. And it should, certainly shouldn't work that way at the local level. So I think we've got a rule here. We must enforce it and it doesn't matter when you go and get a permit, you get that permit, not just in, with regard to the terms written in the permit, but also with respect to all the laws that exist. So you have to follow the rules of the permit plus the rules of the law. And if the city council really needs to, to learn basic things, if, if there's even any question about that, so the, the rule is exist. We, we should be definitely having the police come in and in, and do what uh, item seven enforcement of this noise ordinance says to provide the complaint to the person who's responsible, the perpetrator, and play out the enforcement mechanism. And that should be the very first thing we do at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. And I demand 
that the city, and I think we should all demand action by the city under law and not just make complaints to the city. When we speak, we should always be asking for something. We should be demanding action. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to clarify that according to Vermont statutes, we are a legislative body. I just really want that to be very clear. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. Do you want to make your Don Anglin, um, Golf Course Road. Um, this is 2023, and we are not some 19th century political machine. So we need the government of South Burlington to work. We can't have the city council point their fingers at the DRB, of the DRB point their fingers at the planning commission, and then have the planning commission point their fingers back at the city council. You need to do your jobs and somebody needs to make a decision and make this right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so just I, to, I was just going to offer if, if you would like um, our future communications, put your um, email address on this piece of paper. If you are online and have not already provided um, an email address to myself or Paul Connor, please um, just either email me directly and ask for those um, future correspondence or put your email in the chat if you feel comfortable with that and I will record it from the chat. Thanks. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Yeah, that's Golf Course Road. What about all the voicemails that from people who never got returned phone calls? I'm just wondering, is there any documentation of them? Because I know several people who left voicemails about this issue and never got a call back. Left voicemails for Jesse Baker, Paul Connor, Marty, um, never got a call back. Several people. Just wondering, is there any is there any accounting of those voicemails? So we do have an electric Yes, although all of our voicemails are recorded as sound files and we and that is all part of the public record we have received and those folks should have gotten on the distribution list for public for the public notice that we've been putting out. So we will double check that and make sure it is. But yes, those are all recorded as part of the public record. In addition to that, you can delete those after you get them because you're not required to keep them. Well, we're no as a municipality, all of our correspondence is a public record and we are required to keep it. So staff do not delete those. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming here, sharing um, both the noise um, to help us. Last time I heard it this year, I did not for whatever reason. Um, and I think that certainly made it very clear how um, disruptive it really is to all of you. And for that, I'm 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 really sorry, and we hope that we can figure out a solution so this won't be a never ending cycle until all those houses or future houses for that matter. So, thank you. Yes, Christina. Request. Yes. I know that you're busy in your lives outside of the work that you do for the city, but if you haven't been by, to golf course road where golf course road and fairway drive meet that you please just in the course of your day coming back from hanford or something mm -hmm. just take a drive by while this while this rock drilling is going on and actually stand on the sidewalk and listen to it just to experience like the like how excessive it is mm -hmm. because um it's really unbearable especially for the you know like i said i'm point two miles away but for the people who are directly adjacent to it it is unbearable I have visited four times and I have video. Yeah, yeah. That's, thank you so much for, for doing that. Okay, thank you very much. I'll move on then to um, item five, counselor's announcements yep. and reports on committee assignments and the city manager's report. Want to start, um, Andrew? Um, I've also been by and um, Folks, we know I'm very sympathetic to what I heard tonight, and I hope we'll have more answers again in executive session. Um, in terms of the couple of weeks, um, I attended the inaugural meeting of the school's Climate Action Task Force. 
Uh, it's a really good group. We're going to be focusing on three main areas. Curriculum, um, transportation, you know, getting our kids to school in a more climate-friendly way, and facilities. How can we make the facilities more climate-friendly? Um, folks may know, this is important, the um, new federal law, the IRA, will actually allow our schools to build solar at 50 cents on the dollar. It's a 30 cent base credit, 10% credit for domestic content, and 10% because our schools, except for Orchard, have to be located in what the federal government considers to be a low income census tract. You get an extra 10% bonus for that. So we, at 50 cents on the dollar, um, the electricity from that array would be much cheaper than from GDP. Um, would help the schools uh, budgeting. We also get some renewable energy. The schools can actually get this money back as a check from the federal government. It's also a new thing in IRA called direct pay. So we're going to be working on that. And I have a meeting uh, tomorrow with Tim Jarvis and um, an attorney who is um, volunteered to do this pro bono for the schools to work through this for us. So I'm very hopeful. Um, well, yeah. Um, I also attended um, the Renewable Energy Vermont conference um lots of interesting discussions with our reps about our renewable energy ordinance and possibly getting that enacted statewide good discussion with the director of the puc tj poor about our 500 kilowatt cap and can we get that changed um lots of other good discussions really really good conference and um i think um a lot of good connections were made Great, you've been busy. <laughs> Tim. I haven't been busy at all, but I have six things to announce. <laughs> so I also went to the REV conference. Uh, I went to the second day. I was disappointed there were no geothermal uh, vendors this year. Uh, it seemed like there wasn't a lot of discussion on that, which I, I really would like to see this building has four wells that perform geothermal um, energy for us. So, um, I did attend two panels. Uh, one talked about new technologies, software that has been developed to help balance demand and load and battery storage across uh, parts of ISO New England. Um, and also part of a panel, we talked about uh, regulatory issues and conflicts between, I think it's Act 250 and one of the Public Utility Commission regulations. Uh, that was fascinating. Um, I also went to the Pension Advisory Committee. Uh, third quarter was down but for a year to date we're still up uh, there's one element of fixed income in the core properties which is not performing well because uh, commercial properties are not doing very well uh, we had increased our exposure to that to five percent uh, i think a couple of years ago uh, but then you know commercial properties have seen a drop off especially with the problem of back to work so there are major cities where uh, vacancies are running in excess of 25 percent where previously before the pandemic they these, these, you know, these office buildings were full. So we're looking at that a little closer. Um, we attended the Environmental Justice Community Forum series on biodiesels for Vermont Clean Cities in partnership with the Greater Washington Region Clean Cities Coalition. It was right here in this room. Um, and since then, I've, I've been doing some uh, reading on biodiesel, renewable diesel, and uh, how those two fuels can help us you know, migrate off of dirty petrodiesel because they have cleaner emissions. Uh, it also has less of a greenhouse gas effect. The only problem is that, you know, the current engines in these in diesel engines in, in large machinery and in trucks, they can't take 100% biodiesel at this point. Um, renewable diesel is a, is a drop in fuel, but you have to mix petro with bio because of problems with low temperatures and others, other issues uh, with the way that the biodiesel uh, affects the feed line. So that, I learned a lot just in the last week of, of doing a deep dive on that on the internet. Uh, but I, I think it, it, it really is essential because we're not gonna be able to turn over all of the heavy machinery uh, engines over to electric in a snap like that in our attempt to like, you know, electrify everything. So this could put us, ease that transition. Um, I also went to the Tech Jam at the Hula and uh, interviewed with a lot of different um, sites. Uh, I spoke extensively with Burlington Telecom and asked about if they were thinking about working with communities and developments that had underground conduits. And they said it's more difficult. They like 
because being on the CCCUD, which is the Communications Union District, uh, as the Southland rep, um, it became evident that uh, you know they they it, it's harder for them to to not work in those areas that don't have poles. So um, I also went to the ZEM, which you were at too, the ZEM opening for the school district right here in the back of us. Uh, some really beautiful classrooms, nicely outfitted. Um, the buildings are nice. I did check. I believe the windows are triple glazed, which is nice. Two giant heat pumps outside of them. Um, teachers all seemed happy. It was the opening day, and uh, there was a lot of very nice airflow going on, so it seemed like they're well ventilated. So I, I was pleased, and um, it, was, it was great to be there. And lastly, if you haven't noticed, there's an art show downstairs that is comprised of... Um, past and present teachers from the school district and excuse me for a little bit of nepotism but my son might have to display on the counter <laughs> don't miss it the sculptures huh? the sculptures yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. so that's all i can remember that i did in the last two weeks so. oh, oh, well you can choose the artworks that are down no i do but i tend so to the opening I tend to the opening thank you for the delicious uh, appetizers by the way mm. always helps Okay, um, Megan. Yeah. So, uh, welcome back, Helen. We've had a, a busy two weeks. <laughs> I, I've been um, trying to fill your shoes and and communicating with parents about school zones. Um, I, uh, in response to concerns about Shelburne Road, with my husband, we went on a field trip down there just to um, see how the lights worked um, on Baldwin Avenue as well as down by Fayette Drive and Macintosh. Um, and um, I just wanted to, to provide to um, the school board members and the superintendent uh, my feedback based on, on concerns that have been expressed, that the lights are working well, that there is enough time to cross those streets. Obviously, those that is a major street. It is a state highway. Um, it is, uh, I would say, more of concern the curb cuts when we're thinking about young people walking on, on um, Shelburne Road. So I, I just provided that feedback to them, um, as well as just to uh, convey to you all that we currently have two school zones uh, in our city. One is on White Street in front of Chamberlain School. The other is on Market Street. Um, right in front of Rick Markhart Central School. The third one is being considered. There's a traffic study that is ongoing on Dorset Street. So that would be in front of the middle and the high schools. So that leaves Orchard um, and the State Highway adds a, a little extra crinkle. Um, and so I've been in communication with residents as well as with the superintendent and school board about those things. Um, what I have to say, um, just as someone who sometimes drives, I do use the bus to get to work um, and I try to walk and bike when I can, but when I do drive and I am uh, very aware that the amount of traffic over the 20 years that I've lived here has increased, people um, on, again, major roads, um, and I, I could, point out Williston Road, because that's the one that I do tend to try to get out on, but also on Hinesburg Road, uh, that when there is a backup, people block the intersection. And the rules of the road right, require that you allow people to turn out of that intersection. You cannot block intersections. So I might actually write something about this for the other paper or on Front Porch Forum, because it is not just once, it's happened a lot. And I think that for um, everyone's just um, the smooth use of our roads, really being reminded of that key, key thing. I'm not trying to get, jump in line, I'm just trying to get out um, and actually go the other way. Um, so but back to my council liaisonship, um, I, I wanted to report to the council uh, that the uh, Affordable Housing Committee is going to be coming forward. They would like to have a place on our agenda. Mm -hmm. That's the first meeting in November um, where we would use uh, some funds to uh, increase the housing trust fund. Uh, right now we have $50,000 uh, annually in our budget to, to give to affordable housing projects. 
um, the committee is recommending $150,000 that would be adjusted for inflation. So um, that is something that um, I would like us to consider as well. Uh, seed money for um, a land bank so that the Green Mountain Habitat for Humanity could uh, take land that the city has, has helped them purchase, build on it, sell it, and then use those funds to buy another parcel of land. And it would create kind of a circular um, self, you know, perpetuating cycle where more home ownership and affordable housing units could be developed in the city. So that is something that will also come before the city council. And the third point that they would like us to consider, um, there are impact fees um, for various things, police, recreation, et cetera, and they would like us to consider waiving those for affordable housing. So just wanted to, to give everybody a heads up on that. Um, and I think, I think that was it. Um, I am working with um, Councillor Chalnik, but he has taken the lead on looking at the noise ordinance. Um, but I just wanted the public to know that two councillors are looking into it. So that's it. Okay, Thanks. good. And I, as um, Megan acknowledged, I've been away. I was on a trip. Um, and I think she filled my shoes better than I fill them. So I appreciate um, all the work that and the effort and the uh, responses that you gave out. It, it apparently was a very, very busy two weeks. That said, the um, I did manage to do a few things right before I left. Um, and one was I got the chance to um, tour the three elementary schools and um, got to walk in and look at the Zems um, at Marcotte. They weren't, it wasn't the grand opening, so it was just the workers doing the finishing touches. But I have to say, I was really impressed with how sturdy they were. When people were calling them trailers, I had a very different um, image in my mind. And um, these are really substantial and they look like they'll be beautiful classroom so i feel like that was a a good decision in the short term to meet some of the um enrollment issues and it does not did not appear to me that it was <clears throat> at all negative to be stuck in the zen in fact it looks like it's one of the nicer rooms um in the, in the schools so that was interesting to see the um the three schools. And I would just note that the one school that's not getting ZEMS, um, just it, it was clear that in the other two schools where they were waiting to move in, and it, it was all this kind of moving around um, temporarily until they were done, <clears throat> um, certainly had an impact on what you felt walking through those schools. <clears throat> Excuse me. And orchard was what I always imagined or, or knew to be true of all the schools, the elementary schools in South Burlington, that they're great and everything is, um, um, I don't know, exciting looking and the hallways and the classrooms. And it was clear that waiting for the Zims um, had a, took a little bit of a toll on those schools. But once they move in, I think they'll be back to really supplying um, an excellent um, education. So, so our, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, city manager, <laughs> her report. Uh, just a few <clears throat> quick updates. Um, so yes, thank you, uh, Councillor Emery, for standing in for the last two weeks. I think you both equally do exceptional jobs, <laughs> um, but really appreciated all the work you put in the last two weeks. Um, I think you gave a great um, summary of our incremental work in partnership with the schools to ensure all of our kiddos are safe. Um, there is, if folks want all the details in writing that Councilor Marie just talked through, um, if you go to the press releases section of our city news page about halfway down on our homepage um, and click there, that letter is there um, in totality so folks can read um, the progress we've made to date and what we're hoping to do into the future as well. Um, I mentioned this at our last meeting, but just to say it one more time because we're really excited about it. Adam Matz started today as our new Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, we're really excited to have him on the team. He will be here um, along with our new IT director at your next meeting to meet you. 
Um, other than that, we are very focused on budget development. Um, the department heads have been working really hard to submit their FY25 uh, budget submittals. We got them at the end of last week, so now we are going through the citywide perspective on the budget as submitted, and we'll be working with the leadership team over the next couple of weeks to finalize that to bring to you in early December. Um, part of that, of course, is the climate action plan implementation plans. You saw the transportation implementation plan. Your next meeting, you will also see the government operations portion of that implementation plan. Um, also, at your next meeting, you'll uh, receive the next update about the rental registry and options for you to move forward. Uh, that's what I have. Okay, thank you. Um, item six, the consent agenda. There's only one item, that's the disbursements. I'll move that we approve. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, I, um, all in favor of accepting the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 And it passes. So we move to item seven, which is really the reason for this special meeting. Um, to appoint a city councilor to fill the vacancy through town meeting day 2024. So just a tiny bit of table setting here, um, especially for those participating in our meeting tonight or watching from home. Um, at the last council meeting, council outlined a process to appoint um, to fill Tyler Barnes's vacancy. He and his family are moving out of state for a professional opportunity. So we issued a press release about that. We uh, posted it in a number of places, including um, an online ad in the other paper. Uh, we are extremely honored to get 10 um, uh, folks expressing interest in serving. Uh, the names of those 10 are in your council packets and online for the public. Um, tonight, you can have whatever discussion you would like about those candidates. Um, Councilor Emery and Councilor Chalnick did spend a lot of time interviewing. Thank you for that time. Um, you can have that conversation in an executive session if you so choose, and of course, any vote will need to be done in public. And just a reminder to the community, um, our charter indicates that the council has the ability to appoint an interim or a, a city councilor for a period until the next regular meeting. So at town meeting day, um, this position will go on the ballot to fulfill a one-year term, um, the completion of that one-year term. Happy to answer any other questions or let you all check. Okay. Um, I, it might be helpful to to sort of articulate the process we use in terms of, um, I mean, I think Jesse did in part with the um, advertisement, um, and it may seem a little rushed, but it was my hope that, and it seemed like the council's agreement that it would be really important to have someone fill that vacancy sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, especially in light of all the work that we have before us that um, really having five um, seats filled would be helpful. So we um, developed a, a small subcommittee, um, Megan and Andrew, to interview those candidates. And we're going to, as a council, um, the remaining, remainder of the council, um, I believe in an executive session, we'll discuss their findings or their um, reactions and have a discussion and determine or decide who we think would be the um, best appointment and then come back to an open meeting and share that with you and the reasons. Mm -hmm. We have received um, quite a number of people uh, writing in or calling on occasion um, to advocate for a particular candidate. And we appreciate that. And I believe they've all been read through by all of us. So all of that um, effort by the public has been received and I think will be helpful and part of our conversation. I think it's important to think about, <clears throat> we're looking for the someone with I think we agreed that it would be nice to have a little more geographical distribution. Um, it would be good to have diversity of um, all sorts of factors. Um, and I think importantly, we also wanted someone who would be quite familiar with city 
this city's government and the issues it's at hand. It's basically a four month um, appointment and there's a lot to do between now and then. So we really were, are looking for and hoping for people. Um, and I think that, that's what happened, that people who applied um, will have, have brought with them, I think, significant um, city experience. And that's really helpful. That's something that um, we're looking for, not just sort of someone out of the blue saying, oh, that might be fine. So that is our process for tonight and going forward. So we we'll take a motion. I will. Do you, do you oh. want to well, if there are people in the audience who would like to speak, uh, we can hear that now. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. So, Monica, you would like to. Madam Speaker, I rise <laughs> in favor of Paul Engels. He ran for the office. He received 1,300 votes from city uh, residents. Um, I have been here, I'm 82 years old. I've been in this city 52 years. I've seen this man work his butt off year after year after year on every committee here in South Burlington, form-based code, design review board, everything. And in the four months that you have, you need somebody who, as you say, who's ready to go up and running right now. It's not time for on the job learning. And uh, we live on the Shelburne Road side, so we'd like to see our side represented too. Um, other than that, I guess I just would say he was the only other that there were three candidates in the race. And I don't know where these other 10 people came from. And it's nice that they're interested and it's great. You have hard choices, but we just definitely want to see Paul take that seat. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Thoughts? Anyone at home? All right. Well, thank you. So, Tim. Uh, I would like to move that the City Council enter into executive session under 1 PSA 313A3 for the purpose of discussing the appointment of a public officer. Uh, we would be inviting Jesse Baker, Stephen Locke, and Colin McNeil to this session with Kyle Council for the discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, let me call back into order the special meeting of the South Burlington City Council of Monday, October 30th, 2023. And we um, have just come back from an executive session where we discussed um, who we wish to appoint as the next city council of the Philadelphia Company um, that left by uh, Tyler Barnes' um, resignation. And after a lot of discussion um, and back and forth, we determined that uh, Larry Kufferman would be the best decision or the best selection for the next four months. And I'm going to ask Tim to share his summary because it was really, I think, quite good and really reflective of, of what we were thinking. So just a little bit of background. I've served since 2016, and unfortunately, um, we lost Pat Nowak in 2017, and um, at that point, uh, we appointed a Dave Kaufman. So we were tonight looking for somebody that we that we respect, who has served in the city for a, a given amount of time, um, who's shown fairness and good judgment in, in the committees that they've served on. And I just want to remind everybody that it's a four-month appointment. And our intent here is to, is to have somebody fill those four months because Tyler left and to do it in a fair way and pick somebody uh, like Larry. And I think Larry's a great choice for this job. So that's how we arrived at that. Okay, so Larry Popley will join us. Is Larry on? He's still there. Oh yeah. So congratulations, Larry. We look forward to serving with you for four months. Congratulations, Larry. Thank you, I'm just trying to come aboard. Thanks very much. Uh, looking forward to it a lot. And um, we'll actually be back in town tomorrow. <laughs> We're away okay. right now, but uh, okay. well, in, in, Larry, and thank stop, you. Stop into City Hall at some point tomorrow and get sworn in. You might be sworn in by somebody in costume. <laughs> okay. Uh, be, la be later in the afternoon. Great. Will do. Does Larry know how often the City Council meets? 
<laughs> I think I think quite often right now I think you've got a you've got uh, uh you've got a, a good workload ahead of you so okay. I'll, I'll get up to speed but when we're back tomorrow I'll I'll check in with Jesse. Thanks, Larry. Okay, we hope you can join us with a joint meeting, a steering committee meeting on uh, Thursday. Thursday. Uh, Thursday. Right, I see that. I'll 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 definitely check that out. Okay. Thank you very much for Thank you. your willingness to serve. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thanks to all the candidates for yeah. their willingness to serve. Yeah, thanks to Megan. It was a hard decision, I have to say. We had a lot of really excellent candidates with pluses and minuses um, amongst all of them. So that's who we selected. So thank you for your, your interest. Okay, moving on then to item eight. This item may go a while. Can we take a two minute break? Okay, we can take a two minute break. We <laughs> call back to order and to we get the, have the pleasure of Paul Connor um, and a discussion of this city plan for 2024. You can sit wherever you would like because there's no mic. The whole room is mic. We'll take this because it's got the hot mic table. in place. Yeah, but it's probably easier on the table together. So that's fine. That's great. So if I can just say sure. a few table setting things for this conversation. So just as a reminder to those participating online and in the room, um, that this is really meant to be a work session of the council. There is a public hearing warned for yes. uh, November 16th, which is very intentionally warned solely for the purpose of hearing public input. Um, so we'd encourage the council to really keep uh, as much as possible. This is your opportunity to talk amongst yourselves. To that end, um, I would recommend that you not take any votes tonight. You certainly can have conversation and, and get a sense of where each other is but because you are still very actively in the listening process of the community, um, hearing their feedback before you take any official votes um, is a good idea. Kelsey and Paul are both here tonight, both to hear your conversation and understand what your perspective is for future changes that may be written. Um, They're also here tonight as your professional planning experts. So if there is a question about implications of policy decisions, um, they certainly can provide guidance on that. Um, no one from the Planning Commission is here tonight to specifically speak on behalf of the Planning Commission. If there are areas where you would like to know more about why the Planning Commission made some choices they made, that's certainly something they could take up at their next meeting and bring feedback back to you. Um, but we do have a member. Well, there's, there's, there's three. three. We have three. Yeah. Lori and Fran, both two. Yes. Are they on? Oh, they, I see. I, I didn't see Lori. Okay. So we're not a quorum. And Fran, you're, there's three. Good. The commission did not assign a person to speak on their behalf. Okay. That's okay. So with that, I'm going to shut up and let you know. Okay. So, Fox, do you want? Um, can I just start off? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, can I suggest we flip pages, maybe? Just like start, you know, just kind of do this in order of the. Yeah, that might make sense. Yeah, that that makes sense starting at the top. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't have that many items, just so you know. I mean, okay. Uh, just the first item, and you're going to hate me for this, but I, I really don't, I don't like the orange at the top. <laughs> the color orange? No, the I, don't know, I don't orange. like the whole paragraph. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's redundant because it's pre redundant because it, it you say existential you know threat like throughout the whole document we don't need this preamble in my estimation and that, that's my honest opinion I think it's like I've said before it's a little bit alarmist you've already stated several times in the document what we need to do why we're doing it and I think it just it becomes unnecessary and I think it's a little too emotional and it, it's just we don't need it I agree I think I agree. It's also restated really? um, in the second paragraph. Yeah. Yes. In the second sentence, says the same thing. One thing, thing that this first paragraph does, and I don't think is said otherwise in this document, correct if I'm wrong, is the last sentence. Action on climate change is the most important goal in this plan. That's a real policy decision mm -hmm. that is important. If we think it's correct and we should state that 
if we think it's the right policy. It's the last sentence in that fourth, last sentence, I think. But it it's in the fourth paragraph. The overriding mm -hmm. guiding principle of this plan is to make every policy decision yeah. through the lens of climate resilience and reduction. Oh, so where is that? Yes, emissions. Right. In the fourth uh -huh. paragraph. black paragraph. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that says it. It's I do not too. quite as I'm blunt. okay with that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. So I, I would yeah, really I agree by eliminating the orange, okay. although I wouldn't call that red. Thank You're you. colorblind, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said. Is that, am I getting older? Is that what's happening? It just, I, I thought you had said when she was I just can't blind. hear. I can't hear. Ah, I have okay. And... <laughs> Thank you. Are we still on the first page? Yeah. Okay. There's more? For me on the first page. I wrote a whole counselor corner about it. Um, so the third guiding principle, um, and as I explained in an email, when Jessica and Paul came before the city council with their slides uh, and their PowerPoint presentation, I did not realize that the human um focused was going to be taken out of there and i find that the what we find on the next page where it talks about people oriented environment is not stated enough when we had our initial meeting in september of 2022 um, both paul and jessica had voiced uh, the goal that it wouldn't be the built infrastructure that would be taking precedence, but rather the, uh, and I wrote it uh, in my own words here, but rather a focus on, um, on the people and that the plan would be focused on problem solving uh, concerning the, the people's needs responsive to their lived experiences. And I think that's really important. I'm having spoken with um, a planning commissioner um, who had understood human focus to mean that, you know, just the, the human desire to build and to develop and to, to enrich themselves was going to be the goal of the plan. Um, I found that to be um, really regrettable because I think that if we, for, if we lose the people-oriented plan, we're losing why we're building a plan to be honest. Um, we could sit in an engineer's office and, and we could develop a really beautiful plan. But if we don't get engaged with people on the ground and to know their experiences, to know how they want to um, have their neighborhoods, you know, look and feel uh, when we're when we're putting pocket park, pocket parks or dog parks or bike lanes or new sidewalks or whatever it is. Um, we've lost and so i really really would like to have either people um people oriented it's it's an actual word that was acceptable to the plan commission on page five perhaps people in oriented environment because that's the that's the term that's used on page five just the next page and what i liked about the original definition in um the um the people, the human focused was a focus on belonging, a focus on diversity, a focus on, on place. Uh, and I think that that is lost. So you're suggesting that um, substituting thoughtful and sustainable built environment, environment with, with people oriented environment. What do the rest of you So think? I think the what you said, Megan, about um, focusing on place and the aspects of community are really important. When I hear the words human focused, it sounds to my ears, I know other ears that I've spoken to, other people spoken to, as like a little arrogant and selfish, placing, you know, us above very dominion over everything else. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. And I think the concepts that you're articulating are really important. The words human focused or people focused just feel to be like, a little cringy and that's what we're dealing with with the pounding that's going on right that's what we deal with when we talk about well, noise and all those values are really important i just think right. maybe it's just the words though i think so you you prefer thoughtful and sustainable yeah and i think add some of the other concepts that that you're articulating as that are are important um 
but it doesn't Diversity, discuss yeah. the built environment. It discusses the human experience of that environment. And that's the value that I think is being lost in the substitution of built environment for people-oriented environment. And by people-oriented environment, people enjoy trees, people enjoy open meadows, people enjoy mm -hmm. walking trails, um, yeah. you know, in, in our open spaces. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, I think that it is very much, um, you know, I'm a humanist, and I'm going to go back to things that I, I said to this planning commissioner, but if you take human beings out of the equation, you get engineering plans that don't take into account human beings. And that's where it gets scary. You need to express all those values for sure. To me, it's, just, it's, <laughs> well, it's a word thing. <laughs> well, are, are the words of uh, people-oriented built environment? People-oriented environment. environment. And people it is- People-oriented environment? It's the third line on the next what, page. What, 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 what? <laughs> all the other living creatures. Well, we've, we've got all the other living creatures. It just, it just, we've, we've, got the, we've got them there. We've got them there. And I think that we have to realize that we are building a plan for where to build, how to build, where not to build. And, and all of that is going to be made by decisions are going to be made by people. And we want to include diversity in our decision making. And so we need to reach out to people. We need well, to reach so we out. should certainly, as I said, my perspective would be we should include those words, diversity and other words that affect. I just personally. But diversity like means nothing saying, if we don't talk about people. It, to me, again, it's just words. I, I personally don't like the words human focus or people oriented. It sounds arrogant, but that's just me. I find it more human and humane, and I think it's important. I, I really. Um, I find this this language to be an engineer's text as opposed to someone who is going to be living in a neighborhood um, and going to be you know weighing in on various major decisions that this plan is announcing. And I'm not saying that you know people should have veto power over um, you know the 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 needs for us to, to mitigate for climate uh, resiliency, but people need to be taken into, into account. And if we are going to be developing, um, uh, you know, where the solar fields go, where uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sidewalks and multi-use paths go, we need to hear from people and we need to have um, take into account. So, I, I attended an online seminar on inclusive okay. transportation and it was people focused. It was because some people need more lighting than others. People of color need more lighting than others, okay. uh, for instance. Yeah. Well, so I, we're, we're never going to get through this if we <laughs> spend this much time okay. um, on every single page. Um, so I have another there, on this page, a separate, in a separate place. Pardon me? I have a comment on this page, but it's all wrong. Okay. Um, and I, I said around the board. So, well, I'm just trying to reach. Is there a consensus that um, well, I know you, you to, have trouble with people oriented? Well, how did you want to phrase? Is it just the the, the bold, thoughtful, and sustainable built environment? You want to change that phrase, or you want? Yeah, to, I right? do. And so, then I'd like to re-add the words diversity, sense of place, sense of belonging. Those were things that were in the original wording. Okay. So somewhere, yeah, because I was going to say if we change the bold, the bullet to people oriented environment and then we don't we have so much language around a built environment it doesn't um, flow so i think you probably need a little more um more, smithing. Yeah, yeah wordsmithing in the the text of that and in june just of this year they did have wording they did that was replaced paul uh, uh connor i mean uh, i'm sorry mm -hmm. angles we had a discussion about this at the end of the planning commission last week and about megan's um counselor's corner and about the discussion that you had with lori and um we we were all of accord that the language that we used is the language that we wanted to use and we, we spent months on this i think you know yeah wrangling about it a bit we spent hours you know 
So, um, uh, and we agreed that, you know, this is the language we decided on back in June that's been vetted, you know, in public meetings uh, all through the summer. Uh, and uh, we felt that this was more precise language than just saying human focused or, you know, people focused or whatever. We felt we were being more precise within that. And I think maybe as Kelsey even pointed out, of course, the entire plan is human focused. I mean, that's that's what we're doing here. We're writing a plan. Mm -hmm. for okay. Well, what if we so. added people oriented, thoughtful, and sustainable built environment? Put it all in. Yeah. I, I simply want people as a guiding principle. I want, yeah, I'm happy with that. Can we think about that? Yeah. <laughs> and then some other language around diversity and sense of place and belonging. Isn't diversity in with justice? No. no. We're here to honor Commissioner Robert Herendine. Oh. See, he's been on the, the, yeah. uh, the um, commission now for so. 16 plus oh, years. Just a reminder, oh. you don't need to fight it, finalize language. Right. I don't okay. think if you're batting around some ideas All right. tonight. So that's an idea that seems to have yeah. some. Okay. So two things on this page. Um, Which page? First page. Same page. Um, we use the term housing crisis. And then on page 16, we use the term unprecedented housing shortage. I would like to use the terminology chronic housing shortage. Um, I know people sometimes refer to this as a crisis mm -hmm. it's a market imbalance when i bought my house in 15 there was an oversupply of houses things change in the market um i have a feeling with mortgage rates going so high we will see a change maybe pretty soon i think chronic housing shortage is is a more appropriate more appropriate terminology than crisis or just housing shortage period Housing shortage is fine too. Yeah. I also deleted the words and nationally. Um, so where exactly? So, I don't have oh, 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 Helen, you see my markup? I should have printed no. out for everyone. It says in the second paragraph. Oh, on the on the, on the very top under you, your door. Okay, facing, I was looking at guiding principles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then it, this plan says we're facing a housing crisis nationally. Um, there's a lot of debate about what's happening nationally. I think there's a lot of good research, you know, on both sides. I, I attached this little article not to talk about housing generally, just because of the stats that are in here about the national housing situation. I don't think we need to talk in this plan about what's happening nationally. And given the debate, I don't think we should. I disagree. This is um, a major priority of the Affordable Housing Committee that um, made um, an appeal for the root crisis to be put back into the plan. Um, we have three crises listed in that second paragraph, housing crisis, um, and it is in addition to the climate crisis, but also we are facing a crisis of community stemming from physical and mental health challenges, disconnectedness and loneliness and increasing income disparities disparities. I think all of these things go together. Um, and I, I really think we are in, in a state of crisis. Um, we have homeless. Uh, you've been reading the emails we've been receiving over the past two weeks. Um, people are feeling um, unsafe. Um, people are feeling that they need to have a response from our government. And I think providing housing is a response. Um, to a crisis that people have communicated to us. And I, I realize that um, that the land trust in South Burlington has um, given direction for both human focused and, and um, housing crisis. And I respectfully thank them for their input, but I think it's important for them to realize that people um, who work in other areas of crisis um, have equally important um, needs um, that they are advocating, and housing is one of them. 
Megan, I don't know if you're implying something about Philanthropist. I have not communicated at all with They've been writing to any us of my comments. because after okay. the land trust <laughs> okay i've not seen those and i've not had any communication in june last year the human okay. focus was removed so it, it <laughs> as was the, the housing this company. is a conversation among us yeah well it's public yeah. conversation yeah. yeah well what's the sense i, I mean I, i'm okay with having three different crises identified. I, I think it's hard to, to, to say there's We're here to honor Commissioner Brown. only a climate crisis and then the housing is a critical shortage. Or a, That's the case. That is the case. But it is a crisis. And but we it's have... It's a homelessness crisis. It's not a housing crisis. No, they're, they're called unhoused, actually. They prefer and, yeah. and it is a crisis. Well, but then the other crisis, if you will, is the physical and mental health yes, challenges. Yeah. I and think that is a crisis. And that's, that's raised yeah. a second yeah. time in here as well. You could have three crises. Crisis. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does create a kind of negative introduction, but. Um, or a panicked introduction in a way. So. Well, it just acknowledges what we know. Right. right. Well, that's why. Well, I, but it sets a tone. Right. right. I mean, you didn't like the first red bold, which right. was too much of a like, my God, everything is. But that's why I would add that this plan is focused on problem solving and we are focused on responding to needs and and being sensitive to lived experiences. I think that's that's a positive. Mm -hmm. And I agree that it is negative. Um, that was actually raised in the counselor applicants um, interviews. And I, I think that we need to, uh, just like under the um, something about, uh, let me get there, under the population and people, there's actually um, a section on people no statistical or demographic, this is on page 14, or demographic analysis can sum up the diversity and variation amongst our community members. In order to meet the challenges we face, South Burlington needs to be a place where neighbors know each other and will help each other in crisis. And I think that we need to say at the very outset that the government is also going to be responsive to people who are experiencing crisis. So we are focused on problem solving. We are focused on responding mm -hmm. to people's needs and to people's lived experiences because we are going to be going through in the next six years, right? We're 2023, almost 2024. By 2030 already, um, it's going to be severe changes. And this council, whoever's on it, is going to be needing to answer to people. Other comments? How about page four? Anybody got any on that? That was the first page we just did, right? Out of I thought we just did page three. You, you have an, I have an older version, but it's the only. Oh, you don't have the city plan in line? Okay. It's, it's pretty close. I can help. Okay. Well, I guess I can go online. I just work with paper better. Sorry. I can help with that. Not the branded version, so that you. Oh well, I can bring that up. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do. That. Yeah, under notable changes, I would also include. What page, Megan? So it's page eight. Yeah. So we're talking about the notable changes in the city. I would also, um, so the plan increases the city's emphasis on the climate crisis and takes a stronger stance on how we need to both mitigate climate change itself and counter the effects of a changing climate. The plan also places greater emphasis on inclusivity and equity throughout, including through governance structures, through how we undertake daily decision making. And this plan speaks more directly about building community by increasing connection opportunities and building a South Burlington identity. These themes were built up repeatedly through the community outreach. And, and that is also really, really important. I, I almost find that to be a paragraph that could go <laughs> at the top. Um, I find that to um, 
not be a notable change, but kind of like, you know, the state of the union kind of thing. Um, so I just, if we're looking for a way to, to bring people and, and problem solving into that first page, that paragraph is, is really a nice paragraph. And I don't think it's a notable change. I think it's more of a state of the city, so to speak. So I'm sorry, where is that? Okay. What page? The second paragraph. What on, page? So it's, it's the or page eight. eight. I'm, on, the, I'm on yours. Page introduction, eight. page eight. Oh, page Notable eight. changes. Second paragraph. For Ward 8 uh, NPA, uh, today being uh, October 26th at 7.03 p.m. Some notable changes. So you're, you're thinking that ought to go somewhere else? At the very beginning. The whole paragraph? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a nice introduction. I think it's a nice introductory paragraph that just Yes, we're dealing with these crises, but this is what we want this plan to do. And I think that's an important statement. Do you want to just take it from the plan also? This plan also places greater emphasis on inclusivity started at that part. Because um, we've already talked about right. climate change and the, the first sentence is already taken care of in many previous sentences. So yeah, sure. I mean, so just take from there would the probably need places. to be some kind of transition, yeah. right? There's because the also is referring. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, you take the also out, just put the right in places, greater right. emphasis. Yeah. We just add it under where we're talking about the climate crisis and mitigation, climate change, and countering the effects of a changing climate. I think the mitigating has to do with people. Um, so people so this you would put in the introduction i would it's not a notable change i think that's what this plan is trying to do and i like that it sums up these themes were brought up repeatedly through the community outreach i think that's a really nice you know we've heard you and this okay. is the people oriented well um, i i think part. if we go with that 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 fourth paragraph um, mm -hmm. talking about city plan 2024 is an expression of our values it's a community our goals for the future blah 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 um, and the overriding principle is to make every policy policy decision through the lens of climate change I think this paragraph needs to um, get integrated more than just getting plopped on yeah. right right otherwise it's to, going to sound a little funny yeah i think so we can let staff work on that yes i'm just that's yeah. my guidance to the staff i think you might want to rewrite that fourth paragraph in the introduction to include this for a lot of it i think that would flow better mm -hmm. other than the sort of a cut and paste job Um, so any other, can we move on to? Yeah, mm -hmm. my next comment is page 16. Anyone have anything before? Nope. Okay. okay. So 16, goal three. Okay, let me get to it yeah, first. Let me just, so I have to look through my it. notes too. I did um, I have good look. something on page 14, but let me find it. We can go to 16 good first. Good Okay, so we're on 16 housing. I think goal three um, was intended or should be limited to rental housing. The vacancy rate that now so increased the rental vacancy rate. Yeah, has never been yeah. above five for right. homeowner. I mean, right now it's 0.7 national. Yes, yeah. never. So people talk about vacancy for rental. I just think that was an error in goal three. It's still a tough goal. Very tough goal. Yeah. Very but, tough but, goal. But the correct label of homeowner is, homeowner is not a real, is an impossible yeah. goal and never yeah. something. Which paragraph, just, Andrew? I'm goal three. Goal three. Under right. housing goals. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a real stretch goal. 
you know, even for rentals a stretch as a rubber yes that's what i mean for homeowner yeah. it's for homeowner you, we, we couldn't build enough I mean, there's a lot of stretch goals right <laughs> well, well yes yeah, so i mean but, but that's what it is it's a plan right. it's it's yeah. a well, another stretch goal goal eight i don't see how the city has any more than extremely indirect influence i mean we could say here you know work toward world peace right but mm -hmm. that's how goal eight reads to me honestly i mean i agree with it but it doesn't feel to me like a goal that this city um has enough influence on to retain here well if you got the vacancy rate to five percent <laughs> i certainly want to keep these things as goals i said i know that again the affordable housing committee is felt really really they did they did feel they wrote a very detailed long section that's for sure um yes they did right <laughs> but it's it's a goal right it doesn't mean that it's easy um just like if we have i guess my perspective is we don't have levers to influence this no, like we do well. other so what are the goals? actions that what go the, along how, with how, how you do you do it I mean, this is about jobs and income and you yeah. know this is about sure. a minimum wage and you know i mean right. i just don't think um economic development is definitely something that this is building five thousand units of rental housing by that time so that there's so much competition that all the rents come down and then that's not 50 percent anymore but i also think <laughs> it, it has to do with developing economic opportunity i also see it as potentially you know something that um the, the affordable housing community would be, you know, involved with us in partnership. I'm not saying that we're going to choose a number that we're going to get to. I mean, we. This is something that one of our applicants wanted. He wanted a report card to say how many of our past goals have we truly achieved, and it would probably be very few, right? So, we have to give ourselves a direction. I think. Can we just say mm -hmm. reduce the percentage of households who spend more than fifty percent? Yeah, just. Rather just, than say by half, yeah, just say reduce the percentage and then say by facilitating more housing. So, can well, I? Well, it could can be I, economic yeah, development yeah. too. Yeah. Sorry. Well, this is the housing <laughs> committee. This is not economic development. So, I, I just want to clarify a little bit. No, no, no. I don't think you're getting granular, but I, I want to clarify a little bit how what I perceive this goal to mean. So, by reducing the percentage of households who spend spend more than 50 percent of their income on housing costs that's talking about ami right that's talking about the folks mm -hmm. who are at a lower level of ami and therefore are subsidized to not pay more than 50 more than 30 percent of their income on housing mm -hmm. the levers you have to that's that could be economic opportunity and more housing and whatnot the levers you really have to pull around that are about inclusionary zoning about a housing trust fund around as we grow are we keeping up with with housing growth across the income spectrum which is i think what what you have repeatedly voted to do anyway through the ldrs and through funding the housing trust fund so i i do actually think that it's not just about like more rental on the market that might help there are economists who think that but it really is about that ami right. and at ami um level and how we are investing in subsidizing affordable housing development you something? can take it out i just want it's i want to put a few more words well, a typical that. target um in the affordable housing community is to um strive for households to not spend more than 30 percent of their income so here it's talking about reducing those who are spending more than half of their income Right. So that's really, as, as Jesse said, you know, the, um, disproportionately the lower income portions of our community who are spending half of all their money mm -hmm. in households. So the solutions go towards that. Um, I think we would broadly advocate that where you can have a numerical target in the plan, it gives us the community something to strive for. Whether that's the right number is, is up to you, but mm -hmm. we would generally. Oh, I would know, agree on um, that. Yeah. Just like something nine we can say, we did, you know, we've made this progress towards it versus not having a number. Not all of them can have numbers, but yeah. it's helpful. Well, by half is a lot, but we can have that number. Well, fortunately, it's not the majority of our, of our residents, so. Oh, for sure. Right. We're not looking at 20,000 people. But I mean, okay. goal nine and 10 are very, very ambitious. Will we get there? Most likely not, because we don't have those kinds of 
um, resources to weatherize 600 homes we annually, right? So, but let's keep the number there because let's, that's what we need to do, right? And we have lovers. So mm, that we, can we don't have companies, we don't have workers. So goal 10 says electrify. Can we clarify what that means just because I mean, we don't know that we're yay here. <laughs> I mean, I know what you mean, but you should maybe just spell that a little bit more clearly. Don't eliminate fossil fuels from. Or just say that, you know, convert yeah. interesting homes right. to from, yeah, to electrical heat. Conversion is a word that I've heard regularly, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Perfectly comfortable with doing that. Um, just note that electrify is the word from the climate action plan um but you shouldn't feel that you need to stick to it but i'm just noting that becomes a slight change from the climate action plan it might be better wording let's but, keep it yeah. let's keep it according to the climate action plan. Can, okay we'll keep it electrified why can't you improve something i mean this is That's a, fine. sort That's of okay. a different audience electrify ie convert well yeah <laughs> I mean, if you'd like to clarify, I'm, I'm, I wasn't trying to dissuade, I was just giving yeah. a, a notation, but if you'd like to have a, a little parenthetical, I'd be happy to do that. No, it, it's fine. So we're not going to change it? Okay. Is that what you're saying? You get it, that's okay. You're making it something on 14. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Yeah. So what's next? 18. Did anyone ever get my markup? Yes, it was okay. in our packet. Okay. So first is, I just have a question around in paragraph two, the 18,000 jobs really. I'm just not a, looking at your, well, I'm not looking at the tag. Healthy, because when I went on housingdata.org, it seemed to indicate 11,470 something. So I, I just wanted to check that number, the 18,000 in the second paragraph. Okay. Um, in the um, second full paragraph, the one that begins a housing shortfall, mm -hmm restricts economic growth. I thought that par paragraph needed, you know, this plan is funny. It's like dueling sections, right? They don't speak to each other that well. And I thought that paragraph needed some tempering that spoke to the rest of the plan that talks about the um, challenges of building more housing. So I, I drafted an insert, I can read it. Um, if my fellow counselors don't sure. have it online. Yeah. Okay. So I would add um, an insert um, after the words, this is another reason we need to think regionally about housing goals uh -huh. in the second paragraph. We must also be cognizant of impacts on natural areas as we address the housing shortfall. The climate action plan adopted by the city, and these are the words for the plan, attempts to resolve potential tension by recommending dense development areas with easy access to walking, biking, and services. The conservation of our remaining natural resource areas. Rapid growth in residential housing may also strain city resources, including the capacity of our school infrastructure, our roads, and municipal services. As we plan for growth, we must be mindful of our carrying capacity. <coughs> That's a lot. It is a lot, but I think yeah. it's, I think it's sort of tempting. That's in the climate action plan. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it's in the climate action plan, why does it have to be in here? I mean, it is sort of looking through the housing shortfall through the lens of climate change. I just think that, well, again, I thought that these words needed to be tempered a bit. Mm -hmm. This section is very, it doesn't connect well with the rest of this document. And we do say everything should look through a climate lens. And the insert that I drafted in is intended mm -hmm. to provide some of that. Repetition. <laughs> Well, this paragraph is talking about housing in general, both locally and, and regional, right? And about commuting distances and and how if we don't have, like <laughs> several businesses have stated, if people want to live here, but they can't, but they want to work here. And so very yeah, quickly growing really, businesses, right? You know, there's really the first sentence, which says flat out, housing shortfall restricts growth, hinders our ability to meet climate change mitigation goals. I think that sentence needs to be tempered. I personally agree with one of our applicants who said, where is the open space plan? Why is there no link to the open space plan as an appendix or in the index? And I would think that um, instead of just saying paying attention to something, we have spent so many human hours, volunteer hours, 
um, and resources on developing plans. And so let us develop according to those plans, you know, as opposed to just this open being sensitive to. We have really focused and we have we have developed maps, right, with corridors and we have actual parcels in the city that have been identified. And so having that open space plan to determine, you know, where those um, different um, housing developments should go is, is something that I know our planning and zoning staff are very familiar with because they put together those LDRs that we passed in February of 2022, where they determined, you know, where those neighborhood PUDs could go versus the conservation PUDs versus all these things. And, and so I think that we have a plan. I don't think we need to leave it open to what is kind of a vague uh, cognizant of impacts on natural areas. We have planned for that. We have LDRs that prepare for that. So just having some kind of link perhaps to our open space plan does make good sense just for people who wanna know how we're making those decisions. And maybe that's something that should be, let me just see if it's included. I'm sorry I didn't do this before. Um, I have to go back to this one because um, now I'm looking at your comments, Andrew. Um, uh, that was on page 14. No, 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 no. It was on page um, 9 and 10 um, implementation. And so maybe we should, I mean, we have the land development regulations, we have the official map. Should we put the open space plan on that list? That's great. I don't think it addresses my concern about this sentence standing as it is without some qualification. The sentence which says a housing shortfall restricts growth and hinders our ability to meet our climate change mitigation goals. Why? Because we say that these are areas where we can develop housing according to our plans. So how does it contradict our open space plan? We have developed our land development regulations in accordance with our open space plan, and therefore we are- That's not what the sentence is talking about. Anyways, I, 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 you know, the sentence reads, a housing doesn't refer to, the author doesn't refer to anything. It says a housing shortfall restricts growth in our ability to meet our climate change mitigation goals. I, I think that sentence on its own is misleading and should be tempered. I like that sentence. I think that um, it leads to why we're having infill. It leads to um, why we're doing more multi-unit. Uh, it leads to why we're building for students and, and young residents um, without families. Uh, I think it leads to all of that. And I think that's an important statement that our business community has clearly indicated to us. We cannot hire because we cannot find housing for our new employees. Are, are you That's super. That it, it, it leaves a gap for interpretation that would displace all the work we've done on, on habitat blocks and forest blocks and open spaces. Is that what you're implying? Or, because I mean, there's other stuff in here that talks later about, you in know, part, trying to impart. You know, again, I think that these are like, it's like Almost a Jekyll and Hyde plan in some sense, right? You've got it's all Jekyll and Hyde sections, <laughs> sections that don't speak to each other, and um, you know, listing the open space plan over here doesn't help when people understand what this paragraph is addressing. And the insert I drafted, we can take it or not, is intending. My intent there was to try and make these things speak to each other a little more. I, I think it's fine because we're talking just about housing here at this point right. and I don't know that's the problem. Well, I mean, that's <laughs> that, that is the exact problem. But there are going to be parts of our city where there's going to be housing. Like people can take page 18 and use it to say X and people can take page 19 and say Y and the pages don't speak to each other that well. And that but that's why the maps, of issues. the maps and plans. And the are words so are important good. too. But this, this is a section on housing. I know. Right. And I, I really think it leads to discussions about infill, 
and the need for more multi units and building up and that out, I think it's there because it says our ability to meet our climate change mitigation goals. We're spending more housing into commercial areas. Yeah, exactly. That's why we're putting, right, mixed use. It's in there. Well, and that is what the plan says. Those are the words that I wanted to bring in. So, yeah, a couple they're, sentences. They're in time. there. Okay. Um, next page is 19 for me. Let me just make sure. Um, Whoa. Uh, hello, we're here. Um, we'll see on the TV. Let me just hold on. I'm having a wait here. <laughs> Let me just get there. Sorry. Um, all right. Um, all right, so we are talking about page 19. Yeah, let me just make sure it? it is page 19. It is, and it's under existing housing stocks that starts on page 18. It's the second full paragraph on page 19. Since 1980. South Brunette has. Has significant aging housing yeah. stock. South Burlington experienced its first wave of residential development after World War II with construction of primarily yeah, okay, single family so homes. All right, so the homes from that era may have some challenges with insulation, energy efficiency, and building materials. And if you want to say may lack insulation, I find challenges, um, we're very, very wary of urban renewal. I'll, be, I'll put it right out there. Okay, very wary of houses being torn down and then being built up again, right? So I think that the challenge is, is a word that is too vague. It can be seen as um, something that needs um, you know, to, to be fixed in a way that is not. Uh, so you wanted to say just may lack. If you want to, or what I had suggested is, um, uh, and it is uh, not here. I thought it had been oh, here. Oh, okay. Um, these homes should be reinvested in. The last sentence is what I had suggested in place of that challenges. These homes should be reinvested in, including options like weatherization and updates to the homes themselves and investment in the neighborhood infrastructure, community gathering spaces, and aesthetics. And I think that um, if you want to say may lack, at least that says something. Challenges, it leaves open to my I'm mind. Look, uh, may lack. Yeah, may lack insulation. I mean, that makes it. Well, have, just say have deficiencies in insulation, energy efficiency, and building materials. That sounds better than challenges. Thank you. It's more specific. Okay, deficiencies. That's fine. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Okay, next. Page 21. Um, I think page 20 for me. Um, how many pages is this thing? <laughs> I, really, I don't have that many. What the last one there. There. I really there. don't have that many. Okay, so on page, hold on, let me get there. This is important. It <laughs> is. I'm just <laughs> looking at the time and looking at the pages and the page 20. This is true. This isn't uh, our only bite at this right. apple. All right. So I am coming here with some feedback from members of our community who lives in, live in these post-war neighborhoods. And this plan specifically identifies post-war neighborhoods as those where infill are going to go in. And you are going to have a mini riot. Which part, where are you? So this where is at the you? top. This is at the top uh, of what page, page 20. 20. Yeah. All right. So lot sizes in the city's post-war neighborhoods are typically larger than similar neighborhoods regionally and nationally, which presents opportunities for small-scale infill and investment in neighborhoods. And I would suggest. I, I'm not fault where you are. You're on page it's 20. The very top. Right the very where top. top. Continuing this, paragraph. The sentence right above where it says how small. Oh, okay. Older community commercial? No. Recently, several former homes. Last sentence, lot sizes. No, the last, the last sentence. Lot sizes. Okay. Yeah. You see that? And it's the, so it is only these post war neighborhoods that have been identified for small scale infill, or it's also called um, infill that is context sensitive. And it is something that, again, that's on page 17 and page 77, that context sensitive. 
Um, and I would encourage us to really look at where we want to put in more public transportation. Um, if we are forward looking for the next you know, 10 years or 20 years, we should look beyond those post-war neighborhoods. <laughs> we should look- What is a post-war neighborhood? So it oh, is Chamberlain, Mayfair Park, Eastwoods. Orchards, okay. right, Eastwoods. Pretty much most of the town that's single family home that okay. was built after 1945. Right, yeah. right. After 1953, either one, but most of them are- Everywhere except the Southeast corner. Right. Right. <laughs> and, five houses. Okay. and there is interest for people who want to take the bus. Well, what's, your, what's your point? What's your problem with the sentence though? This is saying that it would be great if, yeah, I think I'm, I'm you're implying that ADU infill on some of those large lot single family homes mm -hmm. would be an important way to, to uh, near, housing. Near, near roads where um, present and future um, public transportation. Well, we can't control where, so these homes are spread out, right? In, right? in some of these neighborhoods and some are right on lines and some are not. The important thing is that if there's available land right. and it's desirable to put an ADU there, let's make that possible. But some people would like to see that land be uh, used by the municipality to put in a community center or- No, no, park. we're talking about individual park people's park. lots. I know. Right, so yeah. if they have a half acre lot or a, or a, or a third of an acre lot right. and their house is on a very small part of that, right. and they have the ability to put an ADU out back, Let's let's explore that. Then why only in the post-war neighborhoods and not throughout? They're the city? talking about the ones that have the larger lots that it can accommodate. That right, space. but there are there are houses with large lots throughout the city. So yeah, why? These are all to clustered together in very tight neighborhoods. That's right, the, but we need to maybe build other tight neighborhoods elsewhere in the city. That is the point. Build other build other tight neighborhoods through infill. Well, no, I mean that that's future development. That's We're right. talking about existing right. homes right but now. But people have like what's his face um well, i can't think of his name now but people have complained about this yes. that we're picking up yes. yes how do you want to change the sentence yes. how yeah. do you want to change the sentence Paul, you want to say? i'm wondering if i'm hearing in the conversation here is, is the concern around the term post-war neighborhoods because i think we were intending to describe typically single family home neighborhoods regardless mm -hmm. of their location so, so that includes whether homes that's built Butler in the Parks 1980s or it's um pheasant way or it's yeah, uh, well, Mayfair park i think yeah so why don't you just say single family home lots instead of post-war because the post-war reminds me of the gi bill reminds me of you know those those houses that were built for all of the soldiers that came home after the second world war certainly we can read more yeah, take, yes. yes that's all yes the only okay. thank you all right that's fine. Okay. Although in many of the city's neighborhoods are typically larger. Yes. Because I think the the reason that it was written that way was probably in acknowledgement that a neighborhood like Queen City Park is very, very compact. So the very, very first ones were compact and then afterwards not. So many of the city's neighborhoods, would that be? Yes. More yes. Okay. I think people fine. would like every okay. neighborhood to be. Um, Next candidate. Page um, 21. I would like I don't to, mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. A lot to go through. I think I'm at the end, except for one more. To <laughs> oh, good. Uh, new housing. I'm sorry. What did you say? Oh, this is report that we're citing here, the cost benefit report of new housing that oh. I think is fatally flawed. It didn't what, take into account. What page are we on? I'm sorry. School at 21. 21, the three bullet points it's under housing very, and resources, the second uh, bullet. resources. The student that report study that was done by the yes. school. Uh -huh. the, the school, school was not uh, included. Um, and I think because of that, this report is fairly flawed. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should cite it. You don't think we should cite it? Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, should we not should cite it. it. We should delete no, it. No, you're saying not because right. the you, you the data is flawed. So was, what's how does it help? It was done. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's mis it's a misleading report. It it's a fairly short report that was done fairly quickly. Uh huh. Um, I, you know, I, it it had value, but I don't know how accurate. This yeah, was. I do agree. Yeah, I do. So, uh, that's good. I think it was an obedient report that did not have the true test of sign. So do you not want it um, as a it. resource? Yeah, strike it. But I do like the strategic 
um, plan of the school. I like that being the additional. I'm not talking about the second bullet. Right, but yeah, I would yeah. replace it with the, the school district strategic plan. I think that makes that's appropriate sense. here the housing, but okay, I, I don't know. Because that may be, but I don't know. I would community with, services with schools. There's a section for schools later on. Yeah. Under community services. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can certainly so, revisit. So we're recommending striking that that second bullet. Yeah, but not replacing it with the school report because that will be in the school section. Okay. 22. Next, 22. 22. Yeah. The um, economy. The word integrated. Uh, it says uh, where the the city will explore allowing integrated housing in some currently commercial areas. I can't. Wait, wait, where are you? Twenty two. Which I'm paragraph? To, okay. If I wrote down the number. We're looking for integrated. Sorry. There is a control F. Is it in the oh, second it's on paragraph? Twenty four. Huh? I think it's on page 24. 20, yeah, 24, page? yeah. We will look yeah. Like oh, I'm sorry. Something. Okay, so I'll wait till we get to 24, unless we're going to go to 24 now. I'm on 24 as well. Okay, so let's go to 24. So the problem with that sentence is that <laughs> the city was more allowing integrated housing, right? So we just need to change that. So you, you, you would, we'll, we'll explore uh, I'm integrating sorry, which housing into some <laughs> right, integrating. That's the third yeah, paragraph. <laughs> That was the intent, I think. <laughs> exactly. yeah. So thank you. Um, I have a comment on the, that same paragraph, the last sentence. It says, when housing available is often not, often not in South Burlington. The stats on that are that the commutes for people commuting to South Burlington are actually shorter than in Vermont as a whole, and very, very few people have long commutes and the ones that do probably choose to do that because they want to live in rural areas. But I don't I don't think the facts support really yeah. this is from housingdata.org 2021 data. You want to say it? Yeah. Well it's actually in the packet. Okay I'm sorry did we deal with Tim's question because yeah, we jumped we did. We, did, we did so what did we do? We're we're changing uh the city will explore allowing integrated to the city will explore integrating housing into some current okay yeah. all right i got it Smithy. okay and andrew what is your i request? want to delete that last sentence in that, in that paragraph. same paragraph it's accurate it's not but, but i think it's generally true that if people can't afford if they have a job here and they would like to live here but they can't afford to live here they're going to live outside and a lot yes of but have when you look at the out. actual commutes right 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 now the stats are that our commutes are not significant there's very few people i know a lot of people that live it, well from, I mean, anecdotally from sure. st albans to swan to highgate that come down to south burlington from georgia from milton but then all over often and that's not the stats yes well, if, we should, if we're not going to be declared, declared about it, we should at least mention that, you know, there is a, there's a correlation. Um, all right. Housing is cheaper further away from Chittenden County. Right. Sure it is. Right. Um, all right. So the or I should say less expensive. Or this is a very complex issue because we are so desirable people come from out of state we heard from a lot of people who have home offices and work from their homes here tonight and they come from out of state and buy homes here and are working in new jersey or <laughs> massachusetts or um and it is it is a real challenge i don't know how we solve that can, can I, well, I'm just about the words so i mean if folks like the sentence it should be softened it should say something like housing may not be in South Burlington, may require us. I, I could go softer. with that. And yeah, that's fine. It should be softer because I just don't think the stats okay. so support make it that soft. sentence. And, and I, I think it is significant to see that there are telecommuters that live in South Burlington. And I would even add that, that we have become attractive to telecommuters. And therefore, people who have to drive to their work are competing um with telecommuters for for housing and often you know they lose out because people who make their salaries out of vermont make more money than people who make their salaries in vermont let's be really clear and help with our climate action mitigation goals because they're not no. driving their car 
yeah. but they're not contributing necessarily to our economy. They're not producing. Well, they're paying here. a lot of taxes in Vermont. Elsewhere. I can tell you that much. Well, they're paying. <laughs> they are doing that. Doing that. <laughs> but they're keeping other people out of our city who work here, and and that that's a concern. It is it is something that is um, a factor. I mean, I'm certainly not turning anybody away, but it is a factor. Is there anything else on 24? My next comment is 25. Okay. Um, can I I'm just, not the only one with a lot of time. I know. Can I just get a sense um, of how much more time we yeah. might be spending on this? I, 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 can go, I can go through this in 10 minutes. Well, yeah, well, that's right. cool. as long as no one comments well, on it. <laughs> but he, I think the rest is going to go faster. Okay. So I, I if, there, if there's not, and you're done, right? I have one, one, one more, two more things. One or two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, how about if we work on this till 10? Because we still okay. have yeah. Okay. Yeah. a we're, rather prickly um, conversation okay. in executive session. Let's do it in 20 minutes. 10 sounds good. Cool. 20 yeah, minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So at So let's dive in. Page 25. Um okay. the theme of connectivity. I don't know. I, I inserted something that ties the paragraph about the airport to our climate action. So I can read that or folks can see. Would you read it? Because I just sure. long as the paragraph. No, it's a sentence. It's, <laughs> yeah, so this right. says that and um, where are you putting this? Yeah, under Lake Burlington International Airport. But which city paragraph? and airport need to work together. Oh, okay. This should include utilizing the land for projects for the community, support airport line businesses, improve transportation. And I wrote and work together to ensure the airport is reducing its greenhouse gas emissions consistent with the city's goals. Well. I mean, they've got their own plan and they have their own plan um, but they're in our town i know i that. know um and their plan i will tell you does not that. really include the airlines per se which is fine our plan, over our that. plan so they're looking at their own that's scope three and so that's fine okay um and that would be consistent with our plan to uh -huh. exclude that too um so i'm um, you know i mean that is what it is it's a problem of all airports have the same problem so do you i mean they have a, a plan do you do you want, I just want a reference are you expecting that that plan if there's parts of it that don't line up with ours that they should change it should or you just want to know what the plan is and see i just want to say we should work together and I mean, maybe they're doing a great job. Well, have, uh, and comments. work together and collaborate with yeah. climate action plans. Yeah, I think maybe the I'm private, okay with that. Private air, air, the the, the private plane uh, community could work with us, perhaps, or the that part of the airport's business. General aviation. General aviation. Get into that quagmire. If you want to say, yeah. you know, aspire to work together to make our our climate action plans. Collaborative in some way. You know? I just want to just, just need to speak to each other about a bit of. We, okay. we still so need to reference the climate action. Well, so we could airport. say collaborate and yeah. communicate. Yeah. I have nothing plans. against so that. They're aligned. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I mean, we're already losing uh, JetBlue Jet Blue. and Delta is reducing also. Is it Delta? Mm -hmm. It's reducing. So, but I don't want to play along with play around with the commercial. But I'm willing to do that with private general aviation. Okay. Hmm. Ah. My next comments on page 35. So anyone before 35 now? I have a 27. Yeah. Okay, let's go to 27. 27. 27. Oh, here 27. <laughs> Second paragraph, Green Mountain Power's low carbon electricity supply. Now, on a given day, you can look at ISO New England and it's not low carbon. Right. Where, where are you exactly? Second paragraph. Third, third line, line down. down. Green Mountain Power's low carbon electricity supply. All right. So. I don't want to argue about this for, for more than 30 mm -hmm. seconds, but if, if you could just say Green Mountain Power's supply, electricity supply, period. I mean, I know there's a lot of other details within that, but I, I don't want to just say that Green Mountain Power is a low carbon electricity supply, because then you're talking about, are you talking about you know energy credits? Are you talking about actually generation? Are you talking about how much they're importing from, from Boston? Because when Jerry Silverstein gets on his pedestal, he's going to say, it don't matter where you are, the electrons are all coming from all the same nodes. And, when, and in February, 
when the diesel generators fire up, right, and they're using fuel oil, right, to, uh, to operate and throw in an, at 103 dollars megawatt hour, right, you ain't low carbon yeah, at that the, point. The reason why it's okay, wrong. ten seconds are up. Okay. <laughs> so what did you want to say instead of low carbon? No, it is low. Can I, can I just ten seconds. The reason why it's wrong is when we in South Burlington move from fossil fuels to electricity, that new supply by GMP will be carbon free. That new increased supply to the grid. That's the important we, thing. We have so you're a net exporter twice this year of, of power for probably a small period of time on a nice, cool, sunny day in May. And we are going to grow more power. Okay. But Green Mountain Power's responsibility is to keep the state fully electrified and supply, right? Most of the time they are not low carbon when there's when when we don't have enough supply. 100 percent of their new supply to the grid is carbon free. What, that's that's the new supply. Important thing. Yeah, that's, that's the important but not thing. Their, incremental. But their current supply. No, no, but that's the important thing. This is about transitioning. Then say when future you future low carbon fuels, like, yeah. system to electric system. Then said put future in there. Green Mountain Power's future low carbon electricity supply. Future is not the right word. Let me just. It's not. Okay. Because we don't want people like Terry to get okay. a misunderstanding of who. I think it's important to be really accurate here. I think it's accurate to make so sure we understand more how much carbon is coming out of the ice New England grid. Period. Okay. That's not. How about increasingly low carbon? Increasingly not, low carbon electricity. No, no they're 100 percent carbon free new supply. Unless That's we go a critical in thing. High demand mode. That that's such an important concept. That when we transition from fossil fuels to electric, that new supply is 100% carbon free. That's the basis of the climate action plan, the basis of the whole theory of electrification. It's really important to state that clearly. So, how do you state that here? Let's say Green Mountain Powers, um, it's got to be something that says it's declining. But why don't we just say, instead of such as in that little parenthetical, yeah. we should say, um, in South Burlington, we're fortunate that all new supplies sourced by green powder power will be 100 percent carbon free. All new sources. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's better. Sure. Okay. okay. I'm willing to go with that. Thank you. That sounds okay. good. All right, good. That was 27. What's your next one? 20. No, 35. I'm sorry, what page? On 35? Woohoo. Goal 34, one that's a typo, contiguous. I think there's a U. 35? 35. We're goal 35. No, no, page 35. Page 35. Oh. Goal 34. Oh, excuse me. Protect And I would like to change the word protect to permanently conserve. On page 35. Goal 34. Yeah. Uh, goal 34. First goal. Yeah. Is that really doable? I mean, I don't know how we can. Well, it's already, yeah. we're 51% is already protected. I think so there's no goal. Oh, oh okay. Right. So, so what, 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 what's our goal? Turning so the protected in, lands. Okay. So, so this is turning the protected lands into permanent. Into conservative. Yeah. I, I would support that. Uh, Right. As long as we're not talking about, you know, goal that says we're going to protect your land, whether you want it or oh, not. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the land that's already protected. Well, yeah. you're a bad well, choice, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, for example. So, so let's, let's hear the background. I want to hear the background to this goal 34. Can Kelsey or Paul, you provide the background to that goal? Um, sure. So goal 34, the 51% of the land area is correct. That it, That is something that has, that's the amount of land that has some type of protection on it. It does include um, private conservation, permanent conservation, um, but also regulatory conservation. Um, so it, it includes things like the SEQ NRP, um, habitat blocks, mm -hmm. there other big Condo association lands. Condo association mm -hmm. lands would be private, privately held land that, that are is, not developed, or that are not to be developed on. It's or? it's that's the tricky thing. So fifty one percent includes all of those things. Oh. Um, so it includes like if a condo association has HOA land that is designed to be open and designed to be common space for you know mm -hmm. green space or recreation or whatever it happens to be for. We can't so, protect that. 
Right. So I, I think well, and in many cases, it probably used the density yeah. at the time. We didn't go and look for every, you know, 10 square feet of grassland, yes. but in developing this number, the data we have is not good enough to say, oh, in this instance, there's not the ability to have 10 more. We can't make a statement that significant about it. What we can say is the DRB approval or planning commission approval from 30 years ago identified that as open space, whether they could come back and under different rules propose to amend it as an association. It's that's too granular for what we were able to do. Here. But, but if, if we're just if the goal is to permanently permanently protect it, you could work with the private landowner to get them to permanently. So right, right, if it's a condo right. association or whatever, maybe there's a tax break. I don't know. But I think what the planning commission was trying to do was to that they were wrestling with the same thing that you're wrestling with here, which is they wanted to say, here is its current status. And using Helen's example, it is the objective of the city to um, make more permanent where not permanent. And they were yeah. sort of trying to find the right words. Really and they say that's that, not so. the right word. But that's they were trying to distinguish that which is from what the goal is. Yeah. So well, I would say want to word that. Um, permanently protect at least fifty one percent of the lands of the city's land area. That's fine. I, I use the word permanently conserve, but permanently or, or permanently conserve is fine. I don't care. But yeah. and that's the goal. If we can't do it because it's privately owned, we can't do it. So we can't reach. We can only get to forty eight percent or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to scare anybody. Yeah, I think it's all a little bit too. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's finally. If it's privately owned land, I certainly don't want to say we're gonna. <laughs> well, we're not saying that. We're no, just saying we, have we the are. To do that. <laughs> we are. No, I mean we wouldn't have the ability to do that. Well, that's so. Why are we stating it? So I, you're, well, you you don't want to scare five landowners. Well, they know five other land landowners really support. You know, five other landowners each. Yeah. I mean, they they're not living in a vacuum. Yeah. I, I like it the way it is. I yeah, I I tend to not be ready to face that question. No, we're two to two, so yeah. we'll have Larry come in and tell us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get on the horn tonight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What's next? Is he still there? <laughs> next page. He hasn't sworn in yet. I'm on page 36. Which um, just act, first action 43 create city tree ordinance. Um, I think we mean if it's what came before the planning commission, create um, an ordinance that addresses tree protection in connection with development activity. Capitalized city tree ordinances confusing to me because we already have a city tree ordinance right so i think we just need to clarify action 43 a little bit yeah, yeah. and this was also just for clarification drafted before the sure. nrcc got some sure. additional legal sure. guidance that a tree or like an ordinance to it's accomplish a, what they do. wanted to yeah, do we would need a charge yeah. yeah um goal action 40 says periodic review environmental protection standards and the ldrs to implement the goals of the plan in the climate action plan we said something much more precise, and I copied it. We said revise our LDRs, protect our remaining meadows, forest, grasslands, and farmlands from further encroachment as permitted by law. And I think that what is in the climate action plan is a better and more powerful way to say action 40. You, we're, this so is your this discussion. Your discussion. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it looked like you were both thinking. Okay. Oh, attorney, I know. At least you need a thought after goals of, right? Sure. Well, are, are we okay with using the same language as the Action plan. I mean, all of these things are supposed to be in the um, lens of climate action, right? Mm -hmm. So, using the same language would 
sharpen that lens or focus? Well, why don't you look at that and see yeah. what that looks like? So um, my one recommendation, if you do go down that path, is to take a look at maps three and um, nine. Uh -huh. Three is the landscape level conservation areas, and the map nine is the future land use map. And so we would recommend that however you decide to phrase that statement, um, that it um, is internally consistent with your land use, especially the land use, the future land use map. So if you have um, some of those resources that are listed in there, and then you, your future land use map says, and this should be housing, commercial, industrial, whatever, whatever you, you wind up with an internal conflict in the plan, which becomes challenging for future policymakers. So I think that's a statement that you may want to um, be mindful of, either possibly adjusting the future land use map or possibly mm -hmm. adjusting the statement mm -hmm. so that they are connected to each other and sure. internally consistent so that two years from now, we're mm -hmm. saying, well, wait a minute, why does it say two things that are counter to each other? Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Next. Page 49, real quick. Um, again, uh, in, air, in the airport thing, just a uh, reference to the climate action plan. I just read, 49. I'm on 49. 49. Just, I'm not going to read the insert. I, I said something like Sydney Airport must continue to work closely together to reduce greenhouse gas emissions um, in that air transportation section. Mm -hmm. I, I see that really for, yeah, the zoning questions around the airport. I totally support this, this language. Page 55. Can we back up just a second? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, go back to page 45. Is there a little typo there? This is logically connect action 66, logically connect the south lane path and lane network. Do you mean the bike path? What are you looking at? I'm sorry. So page 45. Which action? Page 45. Action 66. Okay. Logically connect the south lane 66. Do you mean the south bike path and rec lane network? Two networks? I think so this is supposed to be. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say it's a little bit tricky because we call them shared use paths oh, okay. and and it's generally bike lanes so we just sort of collapse those to be kind of path and lane as as alternative okay. transportation that's, that's good thank you that's clear right. so we, we did the air transportation thing okay. what's 55, next 55 um penultimate full paragraph it talks about needing seven and a half acres Per thousand residents, twenty acres of natural areas per thousand. Could, can we get some stats on where we are so we know how far we are or not from those goals? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Make a short discussion by just saying yes, yeah. and we'll get back to you. Thank you. Page eighty-three uh, is my next comment. We well, should have started that sooner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mine's on seventy-eight, so I'm gonna jump in here. So page seventy-eight. All right, I just want to make sure um, learning from our city center, and this is action 127, the developed vibrant streetscapes and public gathering spaces to enable events and community gathering. Which that, paragraph? That is action, action 127. 127. Okay. That, that truly is going to happen because that was something that was you know, potential here on, on uh, Market Street, and they could opt out um, by right. doing something that I, I would say wasn't as um, place, um, you know, uh, producing or a sense of place was not gained by by how they the, the choice they made. So I really want to make sure that that public gathering space um, can happen. I just is that something? so is that an LDR change or or form based code or whatever? There are elements in the I mean, the, wouldn't it be? It's a scale question, I think. So I think, you know, depending on the scale of a development, there may be the ability for a new neighborhood or development to accommodate a gathering space. But often, if it's just, you know, the, the Pizza Hut that may not have a gathering space. So there's likely a city investment component as well of creating large gathering spaces may be city investments in new parks or like that. and i think that we could you know n not necessarily um have conservation pugs on shelburne road but that 
any new development should have a playground. Some, I mean, there should be something. That is something. now a requirement, um, subdivisions over six acres in size, um, and then there's smaller ones that scale to site amenities for each, for each type of development. But that, and, and so that is maybe a micro scale gathering. If you're talking about large scale gathering, there's likely a city investment component. Right, as well. right. Okay, so that I can be sure that it's not, there's no loophole somewhere that there truly will be um, gathering open I, would, I would just say that action 127 includes both LDR th things that are in the LDRs that, that bind new developments and, and developers and also city planning and city investment. One of the things that's upcoming is um, like a parks master plan would be coming in the next year or so. Um, so I think 127 is phrased to include both of those things mm -hmm. um, and part of what what the role of the plan is, is to be able to in, make policy statements that enable changes to the LDRs. So if, if additional changes to the LDRs are required, this Action 127 allows it to happen. Okay, okay. it's quarter of. Quarter of. Yeah. Stop here. Well, how many I, more I, are there? I don't have any more. What does some mean? How many? No, what? No, no. <laughs> I mean, are we going to have more time to do this another another time, or like, what's? I mean, we don't have to do it. Well, now, what's your I, budget? I it's quarter of ten. If you want to like slog through, but we still have, you know, our, our executive session. And that's not going to be slow. And that that I don't think will be real slow. So. Well, I mean, it's not going to be fast. Is that what I mean? <laughs> so how many you know tell me what's your pleasure we can come back to this we could have what do you think um half an hour at the next yeah your next meeting is is very packed. Is really packed you do have a special meeting on the 16th for the public hearing that we are not putting anything on but for the public hearing so you can hold the public hearing and then have an additional sure. council conversation you should do that anyway yeah. after you have the public yeah. hearing okay so you will have time so let's do that is that okay yes okay. how many public i mean hearings everyone has my comments anyway. yeah okay. it's in the packet how many public hearings will there be you'll have a I minimum two. of two, two. okay so okay. um you if you make changes after essentially after you've warned the final one right then you need to hold another one after it okay so that's what we'll do so let me just say some, some of this paul maybe we can just talk about I, I couldn't square the numbers in here about solar and other things with the numbers in the climate action plan maybe we just talk offline and try and harmonize some of that um if that's okay with um, the rest of the council, um, we I saw the notes in there that may be conferring with Melanie about is there a different source because yeah, yeah. the climate action plan uses one data set and the state mandates a different data okay. set. So, but certainly we're happy to if that's if the council is comfortable. Um, Not any policy, no. just getting these numbers to speak to on each this other. Yeah. Solar gain of why there are two different numbers from the climate action that's plan. Fine. And the climate action plan says we have like 20 megawatts of renewable, this is 32. It's like the things are not speaking to each other. Okay. But did you um, catch the comment on page 84 that he wondered if it should be without instead of with? I think that's important. Where is that? Yeah. So that's page 84, um, that first full paragraph, uh, six line down. The city has allocated certain areas of the city to remain unbuilt, and it says with significant development. Or, and he's mm -hmm. wondering if it should be without. And I, I don't. I don't know what that sentence meant. <laughs> uh, I think it's supposed to be without significant development. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good catch. <laughs> I think it's I read good, the plan. It's an acknowledgement that there are some. <laughs> <laughs> rural homes in rural areas, so it's not 100% absolutely nothing, but it is effective. It is it's a conservation area. That's okay. Yes. Um, happy to have an online offline conversation, but I think I understand your question. I mean, there. if you if you do, I mean, yeah, the yeah. things I circled were the things that didn't speak, that didn't coordinate. So okay. yeah. So yeah. if there's anything that um, that is 
we'll be happy to reach out to you if there's anything that is uh, okay i mean and the problem. plan you know specifically focused on putting solar on impervious not on agriculture it seems to like flip it so i think the two things right. need to speak to each other some of the challenges the state mandate to become an enhanced energy plan you have to you have to talk about it in certain ways we in recognize to, that and yeah. we did that with melody in the in the climate action plan we yes anyway we could talk some more okay yes Jesse. so one i just want to say i i know that this was kind of a heated conversation which was not heated but a, an active conversation which was great one well done for reading through the full comp plan and city plan and spending so much thoughtful time with it that is a huge that makes me feel really good at how invested you all are on all are in it um two i think even though it was a um robust conversation i think you really are focusing on typos focusing on a few policy changes here and there i think generally that reflects a huge amount of positive work that oh, yeah. all the planning commission have done over really the last couple of years so i don't want to lose how yeah, proud i am in the two of you doing all of that work yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think we're on page 84 in an hour and a half or so. Right. <laughs> exactly. After yeah, how many months you've been doing this? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The planning commission doesn't whip through quite a bit. <laughs> what were the circled things on this map at the end here? The uh, I thought I mean plan. this may not be the appropriate time, but sure. this um I know we were so close. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it indicates roads in places where I either think they don't belong or will not be built. And at some point, we should talk about this stuff. Which map are you talking about? Well, map six. Oh, map six. Okay. Just so you know. Well, I don't know if this is the well, opportunity or the plan because or the different points. That same map, I would say, I would love for Spear Street to become a place where we could eventually have a bus, I mean, a, a GMT bus line. Okay. I mean, so I don't know when we as a council get an opportunity to talk about maps like this, but that's why I circled this. Yeah. Well, it was the same plan that I, I had kind of liked to. I would love, and I think people would like to be able to take the bus going north to south. That's what that conversation with Michael Scanlon mm -hmm. that you all received was about. He's doing a bang up job, by the way. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. believe it. He was in Croatia, right? Yeah. Mm. Nice country. <laughs> okay, so moving on, we now have a motion. Like a motion. Or is yes. any other, you, you have to do other business first? Is oh, is there any other business? I thought the other business was that. I don't think so. Good work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A motion? Yes. So um, I move that the council make a specific finding that premature general public knowledge of the council's discussion of confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the council would clearly place this public body at a substantial disadvantage. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So I now move that the City Council enter into executive session under 1 BSA 313A1F for the purpose of discussing confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal service to the Council, inviting Jesse Baker, Steve Locke, Paul Connor, and Colin McGill into the session of the Council for this discussion. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And and we are not we are not making any decisions and we are not coming back. 